Hello and welcome everybody. In spite of technical difficulties, we have managed to get a game together tonight, um, as planned actually. And today is the um, fifth, no, the sixth installment in the fifth book of Alice Baker, Inside Insights. And tonight we are going to call the episode Precipice. Um, last time, so today is Sunday night. You've just come home from the cinema. What happened last time was you found out that um, there weren't any um, other uh, cases of um, hepatitis like 35 to 40 years ago. But what did happen was that about, about 33 years ago, an orphanage burnt down and 26 people perished in the fire. And the two owners, Vivienne and Aristide Lassalle, um, who were in their 60s, died together a couple of days later, but not in connection with the fire, because when the fire happened, the two of them were absent. So um, you kind of had a little bit of a brainstorm and you came up with the idea that, hey, it doesn't really necessarily mean that you have to die of hepatitis when somebody takes your liver if you get killed before then in some kind of accident, for example. Um, nobody would be any the wiser that you didn't have a liver. So what about two people killing 26 innocent children or 25 children and one um, adult that was looking after them for the evening after you'd taken their livers in maybe the span of a week or maybe even the span of a night um, and then make it look like an accident. Yeah. So that was number one. Number two was that you thought, okay, maybe you can find out which body they have moved into because they would now be in their 60s probably. Um, and they would probably be people that would not be Madame La Maman Laveau's customers because they would be very powerful voodoo priests in their own right. So what would they need her for? Yeah. So you went to Ma Ma Maman Laveau to find out if she, if, if she could give you a list of the people who don't consult her, which is going to be a very short list compared to the number of people who do consult her. Mm -hmm. However, on the way there, something happened to Alice. Alice was assaulted by something that was invisible, hit her on the, on the forehead and cut her just above the right eyebrow in the taxi, which meant that um, poor Dottie um, kind of had a little bit of a shock shall we say yeah and then you went in uh, or she she basically wanted to take it to hospital you decided you didn't want to go you decided to go to maman lavo instead so dotty took charge and charged in flattening maxine against the wall and then you essentially had a little bit of a falling out um well, she and she ran was away. Behaving quite irrationally, not helping with the case. But we sorted things out, I think, kind of. Uh, yes, you did. Um, to a certain degree, you did. Um, it's probably also um, a fact that um, Dottie, in her real personality, is slightly different than she used to be with regard to being able to control her emotions when certain things happen. Um, and then uh, Maman Lavo spoke to you because Dottie had left um, and she told you that what you experienced was most likely a very, very intense memory and she was able to invoke said memory by holding your hand and then the same thing happened. She also got a cut above the eye and she's basically given you a vial full of blood and stuff and she says if you want to experience the this whole thing in its in its entirety and um, want to uh, make sure that it doesn't harm you physically. You might want to choose Easter Sunday, which is just a week away. Sprinkle whatever the contents of this file are around you to make a circle and then invoke said memory. And then you would be able to at least feel feel it, experience it without taking any any damage. Yeah, you have informed Dottie of this and Dottie has said that whatever you do she will be there um so yeah we'll see what happens you've got one week left in order to do this well you, you have to wait one week if you're going to do it and then you basically made up 
Um, and then you went to the cinema and now it's basically quite late at night on the Sunday evening. You come home, it's 11 o'clock or maybe, yeah. The house is dark as you would expect it to be. Maeve is, um, Maeve is now sitting in front of the door because she knows that you're approaching. Cats know this because they can hear your footsteps. And then what happens is um, you open the door, Maeve runs towards you, makes sure that you both stumble over her um, and then she, um, you, you know, and then Dottie closes the door, she locks it. Um, and do you check if anybody's been inside smoking or doing other stuff? N no. I probably just have... Well, I, I would hang up my coat and then would uh, go into the salon and would pour myself a small drink. Not a big drink, just a small one. And would... Just ask Dottie if she wants one as well. Yeah, she'll have a small brandy. Just like the, the, the nice and decent, just just like 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 a finger mm -hmm. bride, really just for more taste than really getting drunk. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Alice will just turn on some music. We'll just sit down and we'll cheer to mm -hmm. Dottie to to a lovely ending to a quite weird week. Mm -hmm. to a lovely end to a very very strange week and glasses clink you drink your drink and then after a while maybe about 40 minutes or so dotty actually gets up and she says i'm gonna turn in now because tomorrow at 10 Teresa mcfarlane is going to join our household and i need to be ready for that i will take care of this don't worry well i will take care of breakfast Yes. So I will see you in the morning. And Alice will will enjoy, like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes more on her own downstairs. Then she will make her round, see if everything is closed properly. And of course, you have your friend Maeve help you with it because Maeve has decided that, you know, it's, it's good that you patrol, but you're only a human being. What do you know? I happily have her company because by now it's kind of a ritual that she's following me around. And then I will go upstairs. I will leave the door open a little bit, although usually Maeve is going upstairs to join Dottie. Mm -hmm. And then I will go to bed and I'm quite sure Alice by now is tired enough that she will just blankly try to fall asleep not even thinking about voices that come maybe no she, she, after all that happened I'm quite sure she's quite drained so mm -hmm. just sleeping hopefully okay maybe. you go to sleep yes and I, I set the alarm clock that I don't miss out to be up mm -hmm. early enough for breakfast mm -hmm. okay you go to sleep if you do dream, you don't remember. The alarm goes off in the morning. You wake up. It's for a good thing. So I will get up quite quickly. Um, jump in my nightgown, probably just throw something over and go downstairs into the kitchen. And we'll prepare breakfast. You prepare breakfast. Soon after, um, Dottie joins you. Um... Or she comes downstairs and she says, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Better. I slept without voices. At least not that I remember. How did you sleep? Well, I slept very well, but I haven't had any problems sleeping. Good. Um, fancy some pancakes? I'd love some. Then pancakes in the making and if there are a few leftovers easy to eat later on when they're even cold so and you can put them in a soup broth so that is an option although and Alice then usually the... likes to just nibble on them like that uh, you hear as the morning paper gets delivered dotty gets up she gets it she looks at the front page she hands it to you finishes her breakfast finishes her tea and then she whips out her ever-present notebook and pencil and she makes a couple of notes just going over the things that I must remember to tell her today. Um, 
I will probably go, no, probably, I will go upstairs and we'll, we'll get in proper clothing now because I want to look at least fine when Miss mm -hmm. McFarlane is joining us. Mm -hmm. Dottie is already dressed um, and um, then, you know, 10 o'clock runs around, comes around. At 10 on the dot, there's a ring. Dottie says, I'll get it. She goes to the door opens it um are you in the salon or where are you um probably yes so you're downstairs so you yeah. can hear voices um and if you listen then you basically hear that um teresa says oh madam and dotty's like uh, no it's madam is the one inside um alice do come in with that comment probably alice head pops around the corner just i i am also just alice right don't don't make it too complicated. Dottie gives you a gives you a look, and Teresa blushes, and she says, and and um, Dottie says, well, first of all, I, I'm going to show you your room, and then I'm going to show you around the house, and then we can sit down and talk about what you can be doing today. And for the next couple of days, I'll be here all day, and if you've got any questions, you just ask me, and you know, we can just start small. So maybe today we can look at the silver. That's easy to do. Um, and then the two of them go upstairs um, and she basically finds uh, and, and you can hear them rummaging around in the room that is the that is the, the, the basically the, the small room, the small mm -hmm. guest room. And um, then the um, the two of them come down again and Dotty really spends the next two hours until 12 with Teresa in the kitchen. Um, do you listen? Yes, I will sit in the salon having probably another cup or the last bit of coffee that was left over, a book in my lap, but I'm not really reading. The one page I'm staring at is has been there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I'm just curiously listening in. Maybe I can learn things. Well, um, You now hear all of the stuff that Dottie knows about being a housekeeper. And it's a lot. So this is the first time probably that you've actually heard somebody spell out all of the tasks that are involved in running your household. And then um, Dottie says, and now I'm going to prepare lunch. Why don't you just stay here and you can tell me something about yourself while I'm doing the lunch thing. And then after lunch, you and I can look at the silverware. And so um, Dottie prepares lunch and Teresa is talking and Dottie is probably actively listening. She's not really saying a lot, but Teresa is talking. And then after about 45 minutes, um, Dottie says, um, uh the plates are over there you could lay the table for a start and teresa starts laying the table so she comes in and you can see that because the doors between the salon and the dining room are open mm -hmm. um when she sees you she curtsies and says madam and starts laying the table and then runs quickly well she walks really quickly back into the kitchen she is she's shy then again she's barely 18 so she's you know and then Dottie says okay so um, I'm done now so I'll, you just stay here while we have lunch and then you can have lunch as well Alice um, will be evil enough to call out she she can just have lunch with us Dottie steps outside and she says how about you let me tackle this in my own good time Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure that I, I'm not, she can join us as part of the um, um Dottie starts bringing out the food and then closes the door to the kitchen. She sits down and she says, she's already mortified of you. Don't make this any worse. I just want to be nice and welcoming. She is a maid. She will have to come round to all of this and it's going to take time. I am really not keen on all the social weirdness, you know that. 
Try to be a little less intimidating. It's such hard work she's doing. Why shouldn't she join us at the table? But, 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 well. Before long, she will. But please, she needs to get to grips with this household. Once she understands all of the tasks, I mean, I have no problem that she will master them in no time. And I'm absolutely sure of that. But once she's done this, you can, she can get to know you even now. I mean, the fact that you're wearing trousers just now is already a big shock. Look at me. I was tempted to wear trousers, but then I decided not to. It's enough if she gets shocked once per day. Please I'll follow your lead. You know best what to do here. For once, you're right. I, in this case, I do know best. You often do know best, to be honest. And then you have lunch. It's it's a nice lunch. Mm -hmm. It's um, and then she says, okay, so in the afternoon we're gonna do the silverware. It, it doesn't really need cleaning, but I know that this is a task that is going to have a beginning, a middle part, and an end. And she can see when she's done. She needs something that is basically boxed. Would would it help if I go out for a walk? I think it would help if you just behaved normally. If you want to go out for a walk, then that's totally fine. Well, the problem is if I behave normally, I will definitely scare off, as we learned. So maybe not being around for a little bit might be more relaxing for her. Yes, why? Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, when I'm back, sh should I bring anything like cake or anything when I'm out anyway? Well, would you like some cake later? I think. Do you want some cake? Uh, yeah, so? and I'm pretty sure that she would enjoy some cake as well, but I don't want to ask her to bake today. She's got enough on her plate That already. was my idea. <clears throat> so I will just bring something and mm -hmm. a little bit here and there, and then we can have... Any particular requests for dinner? Whatever you fancy cooking. Okay. Um, and then basically she... <laughs> she starts clearing the, the table and then she goes into the kitchen and she says um miss baker will be leaving um us shortly to to go for a walk and then she'll bring back some cake so we can have some cake later and then we're gonna do the silverware and then i'm gonna start making dinner um why don't you also take a look at the pantry and uh, suggest some dinner menu for tonight okay anything in the pantry you can you can choose teresa and we will cook it all right. Also, uh, Alice would just motion to Dottie, like, have a minute before she leaves. Dottie steps outside towards you and stands next to you. Just maybe you want to warn her about me doing breakfast, that she's not dying of shame or whatever, that I am in the kitchen. Just tell her I'm a bit weird. I like breakfast, which is a total lie, but well. Good point. I will leave out the weird part. I think she can make up her own mind about that, but I'll let her know that you do breakfast, I do lunch and dinner, and she gets to do everything in between. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. And I'll make sure that she knows how, how you take your coffee. Black and strong as it should be. I know, but she needs to learn how to make it properly. Yeah. Because as you know... Not priority one. Let's give her a... Making good coffee is... It will yes. take time. Let me handle this. Yeah, This will be fine. We, we can do the coffee part for a while longer. Then I will be outside and see mm -hmm. you later. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you have any spe special place where you want to go? She would just... Probably she will visit the museum because it's mm -hmm. a good way mm -hmm. to kill some time. Which so, museum do you want to go to? Is it an art museum? Is it a? Is it it a would be art. Is, it okay, would be definitely yeah. art. Mm -hmm. Probably the Met would be the closest mm -hmm. suggestion. Just uh, strolling by, looking at what is there, and killing some time. Probably like she would be out for like three hours, and on the way back she would stop at the bakery mm -hmm. around the corner, and get some cake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get some cake, you come back, um. You open the door and you hear laughter. Totti is laughing. This is the first time you've heard her laugh since before her illness. I will quietly close the door, hang up my coat 
and then probably decide on maybe I shouldn't sneak. So she's then turning into loud modus. So dropping the key quite loudly, just like <coughs> coughing and uh, then uh, peeking inside the kitchen, just like I have some cake for us. Uh, Dotty, um, Dotty, Dotty's face changes slightly. She becomes a lot less, um, not friend, not, she doesn't become unfriendly, but the happiness goes away in a way. So mm -hmm. she's, oh, very good. Very good. Um, we're almost done with the silverware. I think it's going to take us another 20 minutes or so, and then we could have cake. That's no problem. I will just go upstairs and refresh myself. Mm -hmm. And then you go upstairs. Um, Maeve is lying in your bed. Um, and she looks at you as you walk in. And then she uh, comes towards you, pad, 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 as you freshen up. And she sits on the, on the vanity and looks at herself in the mirror. I will probably flunk down next to her on a chair and we'll just uh, pat her a little bit, be like, what do you think of our new member of the family? I think we should keep her. She looks at you and she purrs. She makes Dottie happy as it seems. That's a good thing. To that she has no comment. And also look at you, oh, beautiful. Uh, I'll probably pull out a brush that I have mm -hmm. in the vanity. It's a very soft one. That is for the cat, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I will probably see if oh, she's she willing or not. Yeah. Because some cats love it, some hate it. So... Yeah, that's true. But she is actually, uh, um, she loves being, being brushed. And, you know, she's basically also kind of like moving towards it and mm -hmm. into the motion. Mm -hmm. um, and she's really enjoying this. And um, and then after about 40 minutes or so, um, there's a knock on your door. Uh, so, sorry, I got caught no, up. No, it's, it's all right. In, in cat duties. Uh, I will get up, I will open the door uh, and uh, probably Dottie standing in front of me, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Dottie. Ma Maeve took my attention. Sorry. Well, she's done now. Don't worry about it. We just we just finished up, and um, I just made some tea and coffee. So perfect. Let's go. And the two of you go downstairs. You have coffee in the salon. And then um, Dotty says, "Well, Teresa has put together the menu for tonight. I'm going to start cooking now. It's going to take about one and a half hours for the roast to finish." So we will have dinner at around 6.30. Lovely. I will just go upstairs in my studies and mm -hmm. do some study. I'll let you know when it's done. Do you want to do anything special? No. Alice mm -hmm. just wants to stay out of the way. That's her main goal, I think, also for the next day, is just not be very present. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically you, at some point, Dotty comes upstairs, says dinner's ready, you go downstairs, you have dinner. Um, and then um, she also says, well, I'm just wondering when Sergeant Updike will come back to us about the autopsy on Miss Bellefleur. Because he wanted to, well, but maybe today, Monday, maybe tomorrow. We can call tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and see what he has. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you want to do anything or shall we just jump to Tuesday? Okay, we can so just jump to Tuesday. Tuesday, again. Well, basically, um, Teresa has obviously been told about your breakfast habits because um, when she comes downstairs and sees you in the kitchen, she only half faints. Uh, okay. She becomes a little bit pale and then she says, Madam curtsies and basically scurries off into the pantry doing pantry stuff. Uh, tea for you or coffee? I, I, tea? If you feel comfortable, you can just fill it up yourself. The teapot is right there. Just mm. grab a yes, cup. Yes, miss, I will. 
Alice is totally lost, like, should I give... Oh, no, maybe... Oh, well, uh, she will just focus on breakfast. <laughs> At some point, Dottie comes downstairs. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? I scared her, I think. I offered her tea. I'm sorry. It's early morning, brain. Never mind. She'll come round. And she basically goes down. She sits down in the salon. She lays the table. She sits down in the sorry in the dining room, and then you have breakfast. Also, the morning paper comes. Usually, since Dottie is quite on the point when she's down for breakfast, usually Alice has the cup of tea ready for Dottie basically to come in and ex grab it and just have it in Thank the you. right temperature. And then um, after a while. Um, it's 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 late enough for you to ring the sergeant. Um, so do you ring him? Yes. Updike Baker. Ms. Baker, how are you today? Uh, qu quite well, quite well. Thank you. I hope you as well. Yes, I am. I have news. The autopsy came in late last night and I was going to ring you today, but I thought, you know, maybe let's wait until after lunch because young ladies today want to sleep in. Anyway, um, it is actually true. Miss Belfleur has no liver, no sign of a liver. It's like she never had one, which of course the pathologist ensures me cannot be the case because otherwise she wouldn't have lived to the ripe old age of over 70. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what you expected and what I expected, but now we have a confirmation around this. Yes, so it's definitely the case. It might also be a good idea that you have a look on the other patients in the hospital. There were two more uh, couple. I'm not sure yes. if they're still alive, but I suspect the same. Well, I will have to see if we can get a hold of the bodies, because obviously, you know, it's not so easy to just do autopsies on people who are dying of liver failure. Um, I know, I, I know. I will see what I can do. If it's possible. Honestly, I quite suspect that they will sadly die of the same case causes as Miss Belfleur. I will let you know if I find out anything. Thank you very much. Well, the only thing we suspect that would be maybe good if you keep eyes and ears open after Easter, the cases may start to rise again. All right, um, I will bear that in mind. We hope not. We hope we can find maybe primary reason for this. But if what might be the reason is really the case, which I honestly still hope it's not, um, then after Easter, it will go on and they will murder at least another around 20 people this way. 20 people? They need... It was 12 per person, right? It was 12 per person, yeah. They need 24 livers. And if we are right, they have five. Yes. Well, at least we know what's happening it's difficult to persuade people that this is going on but at least you and i know i will i will try and I, I will do my best i mean it's going to be very difficult to warn people of oh by the way please be sure that nobody steals your liver because we still don't know how it's done well i still suspect the old couple we are looking for that should be around somewhere in the bronx i hope we can find out their name if you if you need anything like if you have a name and you would like me to do some checking or send someone send a car around please do let me know yeah sadly we don't have a name we only have the name of the couple that ran the orphanage but they are gone so not helpful quite we will figure something out well um have a lovely rest of the day and we'll speak soon and thank you off. And then um, I will share information with Dottie, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Tuesday, basically, um, they're now talking linen. 
starching that kind of thing um tuesday goes by wednesday comes morning breakfast teresa is a little less frightened when you offer her tea you have breakfast do you yes. want to do anything special no i will stay out of the way i'm i'm quite a lot hiding in my study or above in the art room maybe just staying out of sight for most of the day um sometime after lunch you've already retired to your art room again there is a knock on the door of the art room yes it's dotty she steps inside she closes the door behind her and she goes towards the window because obviously your art room does have a lovely window so that you have enough light and she says I know that this is not a good time but I don't have any other time I need to go away for a few days okay next Thursday I know that this is not a good time. It's in the middle of your investigation. You are priority. The investigation will slow down, but well. You want to go on your own or do you want someone there with you? You don't have to decide now. You can decide shorthanded. I'm fine either way. Just she doesn't she, she keeps looking outside of the window outside the window i will probably step up behind her just put my hand on her shoulder either way i'm with you just in thoughts or life and color whatever is easier for you i know it's not easy at all it's all horrible but well i would also need the 100 dollars. that is the easiest thing to be done i will you need it today? No, I would need it to take with me on Thursday. Yeah. I'm going to take a train. Easily done. That's it. Just think about it. If you say, jump on the train, I will jump on the train with you. In the train, not on the train. That would be weird, right? I wouldn't put it past you. That is mean, but true. Riding on a train. The wind, it must almost feel like fly. Well, I mean, that was you who said she would come after me if I ever tried to run away. Uh, yes, but this time I will just nicely ask if you want me there. If not, I will just hope that you return whenever you're ready to return. She nods and then she actually, she turns around, she looks at you and it's difficult for you to remember the last time you've seen so much pain in someone's face and then she just leaves. No, before she leaves the moment, she turns around, she'll probably get a tackle hug if she wants it or not. She will get a big, a tight hug with just words like, it's a way forward, it will get better. You are doing um, the right thing. She, she, you've, you have noticed that this Dotty is, uh, when she is completely overcome by emotions, she can't talk. Mm -hmm. She will just walk away. And so she basically doesn't talk. Um, you, you can make of this what you want. If, if you can accept this, that this is how she, how it's, she does it. Or if you think that she's callous, that's up to you. I leave it up to you as no, a no. player, how you, how you word, how you phrase this in your head. Alice j just uh, knows that Dottie at least realizes what is happening, but not able to really cope with everything. And then she will just release <laughs> Dottie from the hug. And Dottie walks away and w opens the door. Obviously, she doesn't walk into the door and she closes the door behind her. And then uh, she, several hours later, there's another knock. This time it's Teresa. She informs you that dinner's ready. Thank you, dear. I will be there in a few minutes. And then um, you come downstairs and dinner is there. Dottie is sitting there. Um, and um, yeah, uh, 
you notice that she's not really eating anything. She's she's playing with her food, and um, she's also she finds it difficult apparently to sit still. She's really and uh, not centered at all. She is. She's um, yeah. She's just unquiet. Dottie, just to phrase your usual wordings towards me, eat something, you need your strength. Please. She tries to eat something. Uh, she's, it's not as much as she would normally eat. At least as long as it's something, Alice will be fine, because she knows if you're in thoughts or in thoughts and feeling and panic and motions and everything, but at least something is important. Mm -hmm. And then the evening rolls around. You want to do anything. Okay, so at some point you go to bed. Yeah. Um, and now make a listen roll. No, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. I hear nothing. Gosh darn it. Dice! Don't roll good. What is happening? That listen, I am sadly to say this is a critical <laughs> success. Oh, okay. 11. I hear everything. You hear everything. Uh, you wake up. Mm -hmm. Because you can hear footsteps walking around upstairs. Upstairs? Mm -hmm. I will peek at the watch. It's two o'clock in the morning. I will listen for a while. Does it sound like someone pacing up and down? Yeah, it sounds like somebody's pacing. I will listen for a bit longer. I think like if it goes on for the next half an hour, she will get up. Depends on how long it goes. Oh, yes. Then I will put on my morning coat and I will tiptoe upstairs. Mm -hmm. When I look at the doors, the little slit below the door, isn't Dottie's room, there's light, isn't there? Yeah, there's light. I will softly knock. The pacing stops. <laughs> I will softly knock again. Yes. I will just stick in my head. Do you need any help to get some sleep, dear? You still have a few days to survive. This is not a good starting point. You need to be fit and healthy. And I can't even imagine what is going on in your brain. It must be horribly unsettling. But you need sleep and rest. I can't get any sleep and I can't get any rest. I can't even get my heart to to slow down. Well, come on, to bed. I will look around Maeve. Is Maeve around? Yeah, I think Maeve, Maeve's gonna yeah. need stats. 21, yes. I will shush Dottie into bed. Mm -hmm. I will plonk myself next to her. Mm -hmm. And we'll just pat me, just like to, to lie in the middle of us mm -hmm. and just grab Dottie's hand like here and put it on me, basically. That is calming. I will stay here and I will read you a story. At least maybe this will calm down your mm -hmm. brain to run in circles. At least for me, it usually helps. And I will just pull the book that she has there that is probably still on Egypt and mm -hmm. I will just... She she probably has a as I know she's well organized. She has a bookmark there. Yes, she does. And I will just start reading in a very low and calm voice, mm -hmm. and okay, see if she at reading. least relaxes, even if she's not sleeping. But at least she's calming down. She closes her eyes and she is relaxing. Um, Yes, she actually does, and the breathing becomes more normal. And um, yeah, she is and. The, the the face that has been kind of drawn 
all day is kind of beginning to relax as well and then after a while she does go to sleep I will go on reading for a few more minutes then I will just close the book and probably just just move down a little bit and just close my eyes there because I'm afraid if I get up I will wake her up so I will just stay there okay so you you also fall asleep mm -hmm. the next morning you wake up um she is still sleeping Maeve is sitting on top of you looking at you you're hungry love aren't you meow I'm looking at the watch. I'm quite sure Dottie also has a clock somewhere yeah, in the room. Yeah, she does. She has a, she has an alarm clock next to her bed. I will just peek how late it is. It's a quarter to seven. It's not that late. Okay. Then quietly, let's leave. Alice will very carefully try to climb out of bed. At least mm -hmm. she's barefoot and doesn't make too much sound and will motion Maeve to follow her. Maeve is at the door before you are and looks at you expectantly. The door is open. She would be able to get yeah. out if she wanted to, but she's waiting for you. Come on, go first. And she looks at you and she goes first, and then she checks if anybody's on the landing, and then she runs down the staircase. I will not close the door because it makes too much sound, but at least leaning it as closely tucked as I can. And then I will go downstairs to one floor to my room and at least grab some house shoes and then mm -hmm. go downstairs into yeah, okay. the kitchen to yeah. first of all prepare breakfast for the queen mm -hmm. and then start breakfast for the rest of the house <laughs> mm -hmm. teresa walks in good morning good morning miss uh can i have a word Sh sure i don't really know how to say this but i'm afraid that miss dotty seems a little bit on edge Qu quite true quite true is there anything that I did wrong? No, no, no. Oh, oh God, dear. No, no. S sit down. Sit down. And I will. I will. Set she looks up. kind of like um, at the at the at the at the chairs if it was full of snakes, and then she basically sits at the edge of the chair. Okay, we will have. No, Dottie said, be patient. We will work it out. Tea is always good in the morning. You are a big help. I'm not even sure what would happen if you would not be there. This would be much worse than it is. Um, without going into detail, she has a quite big and important thing coming up next week. She will be off for a few days and she is quite nervous about it. It has nothing to do with you or how amazing you're doing your work so far. So don't worry about that. She only talks in high not so about you. She's quite pleased. You're doing well. Just have in mind, as I said, that she's quite on her toes about that. It will mm. pass by when she returns. Good. Good, because she did look very drunk. And also, she didn't really eat much of lunch. No, I know. I know. I, I am a bad influence on that, as it seems, because I tend to do that myself, which is weird now telling her she should eat. We should just have an eye that she's eating at least something, even if it's not as much as usual. And also there, it's not about the food that it's bad, it's just nerves, hmm. as we know right. it sometimes. But uh, thank you for noticing, and if you have anything, always feel free to come by. And I'm honestly quite sure if you see anything weird, worrying about me, which is probably a lot. Uh, feel free to talk to Dottie as well. And, and um, yeah, raises an eyebrow like... Uh, uh. I, I know I'm quite a bit to handle. I'm sorry, kind of, but it's like it is. <laughs> so, when you start spilling your coffee, she smiles. <laughs> um, and, and then Dottie actually comes down um, and says, oh, good morning. Um, uh, Teresa, if you have time after breakfast, I've got a couple of things that I need to go over with you. Kind of a couple of plans for the next week, um, and then the two of you have breakfast, and then um, you can hear her talk to Teresa in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> so you basically hear her say, well, I have to leave for a couple of days. Next Thursday, in the morning, I'm going to go to the train station. So it's very important that you make sure that Miss Alice has food. So I'm going to write down all of the things that she really likes. So because next week when I'm gone, you have to give her all the special foods that she likes. You know, it's very important, very important. Um, we will do the shopping together, you and I. We will just get the best of everything. And then I'm going to make a dinner and lunch plan. I'll probably return on Monday. But I'll give you a plan until Tuesday, just in case. And then we will do some shopping for Wednesday as well, just in case. And then for the next hour, you hear her discuss food plans. I think the moment I go into food plan discussion, Alice will just move upstairs, she will get dressed and then she will come downstairs just calling out, I don't want to disturb, I'm, I'm, I will be out for a little bit, I will be back for lunch. Uh, do you think you could bring some anchovies from the fishmonger? Sh sure, no problem. Excellent. Hmm? See you in a bit. See you in a bit. And Alice will go out to do some shopping, the mm -hmm. anchovy, yes, but um, she will visit her lovely clothing store because she wants to see... Which one? We've got plenty. Oh God, oh God, so, so many we had in the beginning. We, um, have, um, we haven't Cesar. done shopping. C Cesar. We have Cesar. We, okay, you, Definitely you go and visit Cesar. Cesar. The lovely Miss Baker. I'm so sorry. It has been too long since I've been shopping. Well, it has been very, very long. Not since the old Miss Fram Fram Mrs. Frampton died, remember? Yeah. We were discussing her obituary. But what a lovely figure you strike today. Well, thank you. It has been quite a while. Well, life was... This calls for champagne. And of course, you know, one of the... And champagne, like the first time, is had. Um, what are you looking for today? Well, for myself, maybe a new coat, something nice. Color? Anything that is not black. Anything that isn't black. Well, <laughs> camel hair is back in fashion. Hmm. Hmm. We could go traditional. The sand of the desert, reddish, yellow, or we could go with something entirely different. The reddish yellow first, and he basically goes away, and then what happened the last time, a, a young lady that looks pretty much like you from mm -hmm. size and stature walks around with the first, um, and he says, I've got this in three different lengths, long, Medium, short. I think medium, mm, long looks nice as well. I think we'll go with with long. All right. Would you like to see a different style or a different color? I like that one quite a lot. But what other color do you have? The style is beautiful. The color yeah. as well, but you know me, I'm always curious on other options. I, I mean, this year, um, interestingly enough, although it's not even spring, autumn colors are in fashion. Um, I've got a very, very light, very light red of maple leaves that have just fallen. You have me on that. Okay, so he basically um, asks the, the the girl to step outside and she comes back and it's really this kind of yellowish red or reddish yellow color that you see in fallen maple leaves. Mm -hmm. um, and the style is exactly the same there. The style is um, actually it's, it's for a lady's um, 
coat, it's a bit unusual because when she turns around, um, essentially there are, the waist is taken in a little so that you can see three um, vertical folds, as mm-hmm. it were, and they are held together by um, a clip. Okay. So it's like a belt, yeah. almost like a half belt, and there's a buckle, and basically it, it keeps it together. So when she turns, it basically swings outside. Awesome. It corners really well. Um, so that's actually um, that's actually more of a male cut, but apparently that's in fashion as well. So, um, but it's definitely a lady's coat. Okay, that is a must-have. Now I'm torn. The other one look nice as well. It, it can never be bad to have a classic in your clothing options. Then let's switch it. I will take both. I will take the lovely fall maple one in long and the other one in short. Okay, so she comes out again, this time in the short one. And the short one is really just um, above, uh, well, below her um, her hip. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's more like, it's almost not even a coat, but more like a jacket kind of thing. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I like that. that that's mm-hmm. the thing. Also, I need a nice, like, wooden shawl. A shawl. Something nice and cozy for for comfortable days okay so he basically um so would you like a wide long one or what when you say comfortable days so it's not really for going out is it or for traveling you know when for it's drafty yes. here and there that you can just you are sure that your neck and everything is a bit well covered so so a bigger one is nice because then you can drape it down your shoulders a little bit Yes, indeed. So more like a yeah, I so more like a stole type for traveling. Yes, what kind of a color are we looking at there? Something kind of neutral that you can combine with everything else. Maybe like a, a sand or whitish color would be nice, or, or grays. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got some very nice mohair grey shawl stoles. Um, I will just see what I can do. And he comes back and this time he is actually not, he's wearing them himself. He's actually <laughs> draped them across um, because his chest is really wide. He's a big man. So basically mm-hmm. you can see how how wide yeah. they are. Um, and he's got one that is um, grey. And then he's got one that is kind of... It's more of a melange type color and you can see very, very light spots of a grayish green in there. And it almost looks like, you know, sometimes when you look out at sea, um, the sea is gray, but then it mm-hmm. gets a little bit green and it's almost like it's this swirling thing. And he says, well, this is inspired by um, the tweed that's made in Harris and Lewis. Of course, it's not tweed, as you can tell, but the color patterns are Scottish inspired. That's so in fashion this year. At some point, I'm pretty sure tartan, tartan shawls will be back in fashion as well. But we're going light for the moment. And this one would complement your eyes, and it's actually a little bit like your eyes. I will take the pretty one that is Scottish inspired for myself. The grey one is the gift. I shall wrap it up then. Thank you very much. And anything else? That's it. Well, give my regards to your mother. And um, because I will ring her later on anyway, but if you speak to her before me, please do give her my regards. To, to, to be honest, maybe you should give her my regards. I'm 100% sure I will not talk to her today. Oh, of course, of course. Well, thank and you. And then very he puts much. everything. And, oh, would you like it delivered? The shawls. Because I mean, walking around with this is going to be. I will take the shawls myself because mm-hmm. the one for me, I honestly want to wear just now because it looks cozy and nice and the gift I want to just mm-hmm. hand over. So he wraps the gift and it's got a 
it's got a little um, bow around it and you know it looks like a gift and then mm -hmm. he basically then says okay well I can deliver the um, the coats uh, whenever after the day after tomorrow so um, whatever yes. suits it suits whenever it fits for you we are home so, just deliver it when it fits for mm -hmm. you all right so how about Friday perfect very well thank you um, and then you know you step outside and he basically he bows very elegantly he kisses your hand as he's he always does and um, and then he turns around and he gives you um a carnation from you know they've got like he's got flowers uh -huh. everywhere and it gives you a, a carnation he clips it off so it's just a short one and you can actually put it in your on your lapel i will do so i will uh smile away if leaving mm -hmm. yeah um, quite uplifted about the new lovely scarf I'm wearing because it's really, it's pretty, it's rare from mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And uh, I'll make a stop at the bank mm -hmm. to get some money and mm -hmm. I will obviously also get the um, stuff anchovies. for anchovies. I wanted to say sardines and I knew it was the wrong fish, so anchovies. <laughs> yeah. And we'll then return mm -hmm. home. You come home and um, the two of them are still talking um, and um, and then you walk inside, you hand over the anchovies, um, Dottie thanks you and she says, all right, so I'll get started on lunch and then after lunch you and I are going to go food shopping with this list and then, um, yeah, and then I think also I think you should then take the rest of the day off, Teresa. Teresa's kind of mortified. Wouldn't you agree, Alice? Sh sure, obviously. If the work is done, we can have a relaxed rest of the day. Also, feel free if you want to have a look at one of the books around here. Just feel free. Just put it back when you're done. Teresa is completely overwhelmed. She hides behind the package of anchovies that <laughs> Dottie handed her. And then the t uh, she, she, uh, Dottie starts cooking. And Alice will leave. She will go upstairs. Mm -hmm. She will uh, write a card uh, in an envelope uh, to Dottie. Uh, put the $100 in there. And in the card, it's basically written uh, for your trip, both of the things. One thing to pay and one thing to keep you cozy and comfy. You are not alone. And uh, I will go upstairs to Dottie's room and just place it on her bed and then go probably downstairs into the salon, just grabbing a book and sit down and waiting for lunch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so about 45 minutes later or an hour later, lunch is served. Um, and then um, Dottie uh, takes her coat, puts on her coat, asks Teresa to uh, put on her coat. And then she takes a look and she says... Yes. And then you and I will go clothes shopping when I'm back. And then she takes Teresa by the hand and the two of them walk out. Because you can see that Teresa is decently dressed. Mm -hmm. But um, the uh, that coat has seen a lot better days. It has been patched up for probably, and quite it has a been bit. it has been patched up well. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's um, even in Dottie's eyes, this is not appropriate attire for somebody working for Ms. Baker. And then the two of them go away. I will enjoy the calm in the house and probably just like relax and breathe and be like, okay, I have a few minutes being just myself without annoying anyone. I'll probably <laughs> turn up the music in the salon mm -hmm. and just uh, have a little dance party for myself. Yeah. And uh, then uh, making some probably more coffee and then sitting down in the salon and just read. Maeve comes in at some point and she drapes herself next to you and she cozies up to you and she starts and she sleeps. I will just leave her be, not to disturb her majesty. And we'll just go on reading. Mm -hmm. A good three hours later, the two of them return 
and uh, Dotty just uh, sticks in her head and she says there will be a delivery later because we couldn't carry everything um, and the two of them are laden down like like donkeys like you know several bags and and then she says okay so now we'll, we'll put everything away into the pantry and you know you have your you have your list you have for every day you've got the the meals um and then you know you're good to go everything everything will be will be fine don't don't worry everything will be fine i'm also happy to just get sandwiches don't worry too don't much. listen to her she's not happy just getting sandwiches she, she's just saying this to make life miserable for you cook every day twice and you know don't make breakfast that's her job Teresa is looking from one to the Ooh. other and she's like terribly um yeah she doesn't know what to do and Alice maybe she's already be... thinking these two are crazy maybe i should find a different um a different position somewhere else Alice will be giggling and uh, oh, on Friday there will also be a delivery for myself. I couldn't stop myself from do some shopping damage for egoistically myself. Two coats because I couldn't decide. But um, well, uh, should we have some tea and some cookies maybe just for a break? Yes, how about some tea and some cookies? And then, Teresa, you have the rest of the day off. You can either leave if you want to, or you can just stay around the house. That's totally fine. And if you don't want to have dinner with us, that's fine too. And then um, Dottie makes tea, coffee, and she opens the cookie jar. She gets out a couple of biscuits. And then, then she says, um, uh, Alice will have that in the kitchen. I'm um, fine with that. I us? like the kitchen. You know, it's the most comfiest place in and the house. And Teresa actually joins you, and she doesn't try to 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 fall off the uh, off the chair Would and hide you? under the table. And then, at some point, of course, um, Dotty goes upstairs, and ten minutes later, she comes down with uh, the the stole, the shawl that you gave her. Thank you. You are very welcome. And again, it was the right choice. She's wearing it and it looks good on her. Perfect for yeah. you. And you can combine it with basically everything that you have in your clothing. So today's Wednesday. Have you made a decision what you want to do on, sun on Sunday? <sighs> Sadly, I already made a decision the moment I heard there is the option to do this. I'm a curious, stupid woman. Yes, you are so right on so many levels. So I will give it a go because I want to really know if I learn anything useful. And where do you want to do it? Because it entails staining your floor with chicken's blood. That is the biggest thing. I'm kind of tempted to do the backyard but the neighbors. It's also going to be quite cold. We could try the attic, but I'm afraid what will happen to the house. You think it's going to burn down? I'm not sure. Or what? Maybe. I think the attic is sadly probably the best, although then the floor is stained. Well, I mean, what we could do is we could take some of the packing paper, packaging paper we have and just roll it out. Yeah, that at least should keep the most of it out. I'll prepare the, the attic and I'll also make sure that we have two buckets of water just in case something catches fire. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It's quite cozy up there, but it should be enough space. Hmm. And um, maybe we should warn Teresa. Well, I've already told her that um, it's since it's Sunday, um, Easter Sunday, if she wants to, she can have the whole weekend off. That would be quite practical. And, and she has, she said she's going to talk to her parents. It's a good way to... So chances are she won't be here anyway. I've told her that she's getting full wages though. That is good. That is good. Then let's uh, do that. The question is, will, well, you said you wanted to be there. 
You can still step out if you want to. I'm not. I'm not gonna let you down a second time. Once was enough. This time I would be happily saying that you don't want to join. Because I really have no idea what happens. Because yeah, I Yeah, that's why I need to be there. I think I'm quite afraid that you need to be inside the circle with me to be safe. Because I don't know what happens outside of the circle. Well, the way I understand it is you're going to invoke that, uh, that emotion, not me. Well, but then you should maybe at least keep distance. I will keep my distance. Okay. We'll but see I'll also goes. keep you in my sights. And you need to make sure that our queen is not curiously walking into the circle. Like, oh, I'll hey. put her in my room. I'll give her something to eat, something to drink. Make I sure think. that she, yeah, that the door fine. is locked and she's fine because we can't locked. have her up there because she is no. curious. She will show up when we come. don't need her. I'm quite sure. Of course she will. And then let's see what happens. I'm scared, but curiosity wins. Thursday, um, Teresa informs you that she has spoken to Ms. Dottie about the weekend and that she has spoken in turn to her parents and she would also be able to uh, stay with them. So she's requesting leave as of Saturday evening, returning on the Monday. That is perfect. Uh, fully agreed. All right. So then Friday rolls around. Mm -hmm. You get your delivery of two lovely coats. Yes. One jacket-like, one very long. And then Saturday evening rolls around. Teresa steps outside, um, says goodbye to the two of you, leaves. And then Dottie says, okay, Sunday during the day. Well, Mamola Mo didn't say it should be overnight. She just said Easter. So yes, let's do it during the day. All right, I will. I will go to mass tomorrow morning at three o'clock. It's Easter Sunday mass. Okay. It, you are better known if you go later. It's fine as well. We can just start whenever it fits. No, I'm going to do Easter. I'm going to do the the big one. I mean, that is the the big one. You know, so it's always. Um, uh, and, and then documents. she looks she looks at herself and then she stands in front of you and she says does it show no i will give her like turn around she does nothing to see all right then i will go to my parents church just don't pray to the holy mary Just what focus on him up front. I Everything think that can go wrong has already gone wrong. Mm. Please don't jinx it. I'm quite sure it can get worse. We don't want that. No, we don't. So evening, it's actually a really, uh, tonight is fish because obviously now it's like Easter Saturday. So Good Friday, Easter Saturday have all been f fasting days. So basically mm -hmm. there was no meat. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. There was no meat. Um, Sunday morning at two o'clock. Um, you know that she's going to leave the house, but unless you really want to wait and sit up, you will not hear it because she's very quiet. I am not crazy enough to get up for a thing like that. <laughs> Especially since she doesn't have breakfast because she needs to be fasted to go. Yeah. Alice will just get up whenever she feels like mm -hmm. getting up because she knows she doesn't have a time pressure. So I'm quite sure this uh, for Sunday she did not set an alarm clock. She's just mm -hmm. sleeping in as long as she's able to without being woken by the queen, probably. Mm -hmm. But uh, she will just sleep in as best as she can and just mm -hmm. tiptoe down, uh, make herself coffee, just a single piece of toast. Not. Well, that's what you think you will be doing. However, of course, by the time you wake up, Dottie's already Dottie back. Dottie should be back, that's true. No, then it would be And there's a really breakfast. lovely breakfast waiting for you. I'm sorry I slept in. I didn't think about no, you would no, return it's... for breakfast. It's Sunday. But it's my e job. Yeah, but it's Easter Sunday. And I was, I was up anyway and I wanted to do this. Well, it smells amazing. 
Yeah, it is actually a really, I mean, your, your pancakes are good. Hers are a little bit gooder. <laughs> Hers are amazing, I would say. Mine, mine are okay-ish. There is bacon and then there is um, roasted tomatoes and then there is, um, you know, uh, she's also gone, to, gone on to make portobello mushrooms with some cheese and some nuts on them and it looks really nice and it smells nice and it tastes nice and she says well normally i would say happy easter well we can still say happy easter there are a lot of kids out there looking for eggs hidden enjoying the time so happy easter dear and then she basically says don't move and she comes back with two um, hard-boiled painted eggs. No, oh! They are too pretty to be eat. They'll go off if we don't eat them, so I hey. Know. I know. And she holds hers up for you to knock yours against Cheers. it. <laughs> and then, of course, they break open and you can open. eat them and it's, it's, it's lovely. Well, then, do you want to do this before lunch or after lunch? Shall we get it over with? I think we should get it over with. We had a good and hearty breakfast. I will just have a second cup of coffee just to be safe and sound. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to ask how was mass? Did you see the family? You can just I did. say shush, go away. No, okay. I will never say that. You have all the rights if I start to be I... nosy in topics you don't want to talk about. No, they were there. And I think they were happy to see me. You don't have to think they were happy to see you, for sure. So she, she, she basically drinks her tea. Then the two of you go upstairs into the attic. She's already put out the, 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 the packaging paper. Mm -hmm. You draw a circle. Yes. You sit down in it. Yeah, also I'm sitting there in comfy, worn clothing, not too too fancy, just in case anything happens. Yeah. You close your eyes. Mm -hmm. You breathe in. Mm -hmm. You breathe out. What do you think of? I try to remember the scene in the taxi where mm -hmm. it was just like a flash was trying to focus on the flash not on the being hit part <laughs> okay you close your eyes and it suddenly seems to i mean it's it's the attic it mm -hmm. doesn't have any um any windows or anything no skylights so any light that you brought with you is the only light that you have so it's kind of darkish mm -hmm. But when you close your eyes and there is any light source, you always see kind of like a little bit of a red sheen mm -hmm. on your eyelids. Now that slowly fades and it becomes really black. And then you suddenly have a really weird sensation as if your body is suspended in mid air. And it's slowly turning from side to side, not making a full circle, but basically slowly turning. And you hear voices, angry voices, speaking, shouting in French. You open your eyes and you realize you are actually hanging suspended by your arms your arms are stretched up over your head you can feel that there is a rope tied around your wrists your body is slowly turning from side to side mm -hmm. you can see your legs you can see that you're wearing a skirt you're wearing what looks like a very old-fashioned servant's outfit mm -hmm. like you know the white apron um, the black, um, the black skirt. Well, it's it's more like a dress. The black dress, yeah. white apron. And below you, you see a group of white people, men, 
um, they're shouting. Some of them have torches. Two or three of them have shotguns. And they are... Some of them have very slurred speech. You, you understand what they're saying. They speak French. The clothes are quite old-fashioned. You would say that this has been out of fashion for the last 150 years or so. Okay, because you would focus on a... Um, looking at myself and my skin, I should be at least able to see my hands or my skin Your color. hands are basically like this. Am I... You can't see them, but you can see your legs. And yes, you have dark skin. Okay. You are definitely African-American. And uh, yeah, then she would try to focus on getting ideas on when in time this is. Then make a... Um, yeah, make a... Mm, is there such, such a thing as history? I yes, there is. Do you have any points in yes, history? Yes, I do. Not much, but... Well, actually, enough. I think considering that you know art... Mm-hmm. Um, let's instead make an um, education a, a no role. Then it's even better because I rolled a 10. Oh, wow. So that must it's be education, a critical. It's a critical. And yeah. if it would be um, history, it would be still a success. Okay, excellent. So basically, this is definitely uh, 18th century. Okay. You also smell burning mm. flames fire torches you also smell something else um and you hear beyond the shouting and it's dark it's dark and you feel it's very warm it's very moist the air is very moist you can smell decaying plants um do you think you've alice has ever been in a swamp land yes okay then this is swamp this is this is um you can hear cicadas you can hear the night noises of a swamp land around you and as you look further ahead you see that there is a big house and again your knowledge of history and and you know basically the fact that you are very well educated this is a plantation it's one of those typical louisiana white wooden houses that are kind of like i don't want to say that they're on stilts but you know how they have like they're kind of up in the air on something and then basically there is the wide staircase and on that staircase you can see a woman a white woman dressed in impeccably beautiful clothes beautifully maintained completely white she's willowy she's tall she has like a dress that goes up here you know almost like the you know the um the frill that encloses yeah. the throat almost like a choker and next to her as or basically she's standing behind a boy and a girl um both white as well maybe eight and ten looking at you or at the scene unfolding in front of them and then you feel like you 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 feel more than you you see something flying towards you and you feel like somebody struck you with a stone over your red eye you start you feel you're starting to bleed the, mm -hmm. the blood is running into your eye because you were hit you turn a little more and as you turn more you actually see that there is another person hanging beside you mm -hmm. it's a man he's also black he um he has several wounds um his his shirt is to has been torn open he's several wounds that he's bleeding from on his torso and he looks at you and he says um ma chère tout sera bien Alice will just nod not sure if the person will nod what her reaction would be nodding mm -hmm. And then um, someone obviously has a kind of whip um, and he whips that man. And of course, he's crying because that's really painful. And then um, somebody hits you in the stomach with the butt of a rifle. Um, and this, we will not go into any detail, but this goes mm -hmm. on for quite a while. And it is very, very, very painful. It's excruciating. 
And then all of a sudden, you, you feel like somebody has taken you and pulled you up by your legs and suspended you by your legs and you're hurtling through the night. And the next thing you know is you see two bodies hanging from a tree and the backs of maybe five, six men towards you and they are pelting the bodies with stones. And then you feel a hand grab yours and you hear ma chère, tout sera bien. And you turn your head and you look into the face of a white boy, maybe 10 years old. Then you hear two shots, you turn your head and you see that the bodies on the tree have gone limp. Just from height point of view, Alice would just, am I the same height roughly as the no, boy? No, probably, yes, yeah, as the boy, yes. Mm -hmm. Because she now remembers the woman with the two children. Mm -hmm. So she suspects the two children are the ones. Probably, maybe. Um, she will just stay in the moment and see whatever happens. You see that the men come back. And the woman behind you, she's got one hand on your shoulder, one hand on the shoulder of the boy, tells you to, to go inside. And she and the, the man, one of the men steps towards her. He is completely drunk. You can see it, his face is flushed. And she just says, Francois, what have you done? And she turns around and follows you. And then everything goes black. And then you kind of are beginning to feel conscious again, but it's mm -hmm. more like you're beginning to wake up to the sensations that your body gives you and you notice first of all that your legs are stretched out and you're lying on something that is quite hard mm -hmm. but you also notice that your upper body is kind of a little bit lifted up and your head and shoulders are lying on something that is a lot softer do you open your eyes i will open carefully one eye just okay. like peeking where I am. Well, as you open one eye, the first thing you see is Dottie's face, but it's kind of upside down. Yeah, um, then it's good. And she's looking at you. I will just take a deep breath. I'm back. Yes, it took you a while. How long was I out? She looks at her watch for the better part of an hour. Well, a lot of horrible things happen during the time. Yes, I could tell. Alice will just look at her hands and just see if she got any bruises from all of this happening or if it no. worked. Okay. No, you don't have any bruises, but, um, but she says, she, she, she lightly brushes your cheek and she says, and she shows you her finger, all of your mascara has basically gone. You were crying all the time. What, what happened? Let's go downstairs. I need a drink after this. Just a small one. Um, I will try says, to sit up on my own. That does work. Mm-hmm. And she says, okay, but please stay put for a second. She gets up before you do, because obviously you were lying in her lap. So she has, you have to get up first. Yeah. She gets up, she reaches out her hand to you mm -hmm. 
I will take and it. And tries to help you. Now make a dex check with disadvantage. Okay, the first one was a four. Let's see what... Oh, wow, a four, wow. 24 still but that's still a success definitely yeah. a success okay so you you manage to steady yourself with the help of dotty but um you could kind of feel a little bit disoriented but yeah. you're not dizzy so that's a good thing and then the two of you go to the attic door she opens it you go downstairs i assume it's actually a door and then a staircase rather than one of those trap doors where you have to then go and take a, a climb down a ladder i said is it yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. a small stairway behind the door. Just very mm -hmm. slim, but enough yeah, that you yeah, can get up and down. Mean, okay. Because the other stair, I wouldn't have been afraid about the cat going in up because mm -hmm. that is quite... Although cats... Yeah, you're, you're right, of course, yeah. But, yeah. but these are, are tricky to climb, so... Mm -hmm. So you go downstairs, as yeah. you go down... Um, On the um, way, I would just mm -hmm. tell... Let Maeve out as well. Yeah, Dottie was actually going to do the same thing, so you have the same thought at the same time. She opens the door. Maeve... Um, runs outside and she sniffs you and then she does something she's never done before she she starts hissing at you and she goes full um, bottle brush um, mode so her you know how they then puff mm -hmm. out yeah and she goes into this mm -hmm. and she runs away from you she did not like what I was doing I should probably shower after this <sighs> Come on, let's let's, let's well, go. How down. about you have how about you have that shower and I'm gonna make you a very strong coffee and I'm gonna make you a very stiff drink. No no, first we drink and talk. All right. I don't wanna forget okay. any detail. Alright. So the two of you go down the stairs. Yeah. You come into the into the um I will wanna sit the in salon. the No, I will sit in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. Okay. So she comes back and she asks what, what drink? Anything. Whiskey? Choose. All right, anything. <laughs> she comes back with, with that strange whiskey you once got from somebody from Scotland that tastes oh like. Oh God! Oh my God! Not that. Uh, <laughs> well, this she says. Well, it contains so much iodine. It's medicinal. I get that. Well, it could clean out everything that is still on yeah, the Yeah, it brings people back from the dead. Yeah, I can believe that. Ooh. And she 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 hands it to you, and then she says, "and and I'll make you a stiff coffee, a, a really strong coffee." And she makes it a very very strong coffee. I think already while she's in the kitchen doing the coffee, because that's not a very noisy job; it's just a thing to be done. Um, Alice will start to exactly describe as much as she can remember from the scenery. She, so she will warn Dotty, it's gruesome, but uh, she will detailed describe what she saw what she heard and um, feeling kind of sorry for what happened to them and that it made them switch bodies she hands you the coffee she, she sits down and then she says, Do you know what I wonder? Is it a body switch? Or is it an evacuation? So what I'm trying to say is, did they switch bodies with the children? And did the children go into their bodies? Or did the children just go somewhere else? Or you know just I mean. children still there somewhere in the back. Because if it's a real body switch. Oh god, that would be horrible. Then I'm not sorry because the children definitely also did not deserve what happened there. It's a good question. That is something worth asking Maman Laban if she has an idea if it's more like a hostage situation or kicking someone out or if she said like a proper switch because if it's a proper switch that would be 
well, all is horrible. Also, what happened to them was horrible. <sighs> Do you have any memory of why it happened? Do you have any memory what your name was? No names, as far as I remember. Also, no proper reason. The men were drunk and quite angry. I only know that one of the men that came back, his name was Francoise. Francois, yeah. Francois, yeah. Seemed to be part of the family where the children belong to. Hesitant to say husband, but I'm not sure. Could be brother or whatever, but some kind of link. And just a question, what have you done? So the woman definitely did not approve of what happened there. But honestly, we know all the stories firsthand, how they treated people down there. They didn't treat their servants as human beings. They treated of course what better. They, were. they weren't servants. I was a servant. They were slaves. They were slaves. They're treating your horses and animals better than people. Probably there was not even really a proper reason, just a made up thing or something misunderstood. So if this is correct, then you witnessed how it all began. It feels like it, because they clearly did not take livers. Or if they did, we might have a reason why they did that, because maybe they assumed they were the reason why a lot of people died around them. Witchcraft, as the white man says. Or voodoo, as they say down there. Well, maybe we, you should really talk to Ma Maman Lavo about this again. Well, she asked me to, if I do this, to come by again. Question is, do we want to go today? I'm not sure how busy she's on Easter, to be honest, but today should be a calm day in regards to whatever will happen again in the next days. Well, I, I mean, she, I think Ma, she did say that Easter and the 18th of August were the heydays for her, so maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Easter Monday should be quiet. Then let's go tomorrow. And see if she has an idea. It shows again that as evil as it is, in our point of view, maybe not everything is purely evil. Because it felt more desperate than anything. Well, it was a way to survive. I'm not, I'm not defending this, but this was a way to survive. Because if they entered the bodies of those children, chances are they grew up and inherited the place. And after that, I must have moved on to the couple that ran the orphanage, time-wise, maybe. Maybe there's also another generation between that. But we were told that the couple came originally from Louisiana. Yeah. So that is when they decided on whatever reason to move to New York. Make um, an idea roll. I like the dice today, even if it's always different, that's a critical success. Okay. Now, if the assumption that they entered the body of the children and the children were the offspring of the plantation owner is correct, the children should have been rich. Yeah. The LaSalles were not rich and they were black. So something must have happened to that family yeah. that they became destitute. That might be something that maybe one could find out if one were to research plantations in Louisiana. Oh, there have been so many down there. It's worth a try, but it's, well, the needle in the haystack, I would suspect. But yeah, something drove them out of Louisiana and... 
and made them go into black people again, which is not a not the thing to do if you are already white. Well, the question is, if there were Native Americans going back to the roots, maybe there is a reason, because the hope is in New York you are treated better. It's completely different than in the South. Yeah. You could be more yourself. Or it was just an option or an opportunity that came up, similar to maybe what happened there. They didn't have many choices. No, they didn't. Because clearly they didn't want to go into one of these guys. And they need two bodies. So the siblings, if it's siblings, which it seemed to, are obvious choice. Mm -hmm. Maybe quite hesitant choice. But the only choice they had. Well, we can see what we can find from around 100, 150 years ago in regards to plantations in Louisiana. Two children running. Or two siblings later on running. The plantation and something happening. We can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, um, now I will go shower. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you hear Dottie busying herself around the house downstairs. When you come down, she's sitting in the salon mm -hmm. and looking at the notes that she took while you were talking. Yeah. And then she says, how are you feeling? Better. It's still a weird memory lingering a bit because it felt like I was there and it's obviously not my memory but still quite vivid but at least Maman Lavance security measure helped this time I did not get physically attacked because I was in the moment where someone threw a stone at this space. Exactly the same feeling as the cab moment. But this time nothing happened. That's Tell good. Me. That's good. When I look at what you were telling me, it's good because otherwise you would be missing two fingers. And a lot more. And a lot more. Because I'm not sure if I would be steady enough to survive what they went through, at least for that long. Let's see what Mama Lavo has to say tomorrow. Maybe she also remembers someone that is not part of her customers. Yes, there's still still that list, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Are you up for lunch? Yes. Is there anything I can do for you? Lunch. I'm hungry. Lunch. Which is weird enough to say for me. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm she a makes plate coming up. Yeah, she makes wonderful lunch. It, it's not that much because obviously there will be dinner later, but it's yeah. excellent lunch. And then, you know, is there anything you want to do? I think the only thing Alice would want to have a walk outside together. Mm -hmm. Just some fresh air getting out of the house, just like having city and noises around to mm -hmm. try to really get back into mm -hmm. I am here and stop lingering in what she yeah. went through. So the two of you go for a walk. Yeah. And it's um it's a nice it's a nice day. Um and and it's it's also sunny. It's cold but it's sunny. Mhm. Mm and yeah, you go for a lovely walk. Um you can see that you both have shadows. And um, then you can make a spot hidden. That is a success. In front of you, suddenly you see a person who's wearing exactly the same coat that you bought. The extremely pretty one or the, the other The extremely one? pretty one, yes. And then she stops, she makes a 90 degree turn to cross the road 
and she looks exactly like you. I will you lose three sanity. Let's first of all click off the sanity. One, two, three. I will just pull on Dutty's hand and just point blankly. What is it? She, she's there. Look at the coat. That's my coat. Yes, I'm pretty sure that there's more than just one coat. She looked like me. She. Well, now she's actually crossed the road, so mm -hmm. Dottie cannot see her face. And what? No, 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 no. Alice no. will loudly whistle to get attention and maybe see if someone on the other side, someone special, is turning around. What is your luck? It's still 17. <laughs> okay, you get to make a choice. Do mm -hmm. you want somebody to turn around or don't you want to make I it? want her to turn around because she clearly knows I'm here. I want Dottie to have a grasp if it's the face or if I'm making up stuff. The woman in the coat turns around and she looks at you. And she waves. You see that, right? Dottie looks at the woman and she says, she looks exactly like you. I hate her with all my guts and I hope that her sisters hate her as well and make her life miserable. Let's move on. Alice will give her just a stink eye and will turn around like high nosed and will pull Dottie forward in another direction. At least she wasn't in our house. Well, it seems again that Mama Laval's help at least keeps her kind of at bay. Why does she always steal my look and my nice clothing? Can't she have an old style? Well, when she turned into me, you said that this was even more disconcerting. You put her off. She should just get her own look without stealing from someone else. It's not that difficult. Didn't you say that if you saw the true face of a god, you would die? Well, I highly doubt that by now, but can't she just stay out of our way? Just find another person to... Suddenly, Dottie Get stops in her tracks. Mm-hmm. What if she ever comes to the house when you're not there? How will we be able to tell? Oh, don't make this even worse. You're right. Hmm. Well, A, the question is if Maeve would recognize. Because she sees and feels everything. Should we start some kind of ritual that is only happening in the house that she can't know of? We need we need to find a way of, of ensuring, unless of course the charms would mean that she can come to the house but not enter it. But I mean, if she really shows up, let's say when we're both away and Teresa is at home on her own. She doesn't know what we can't explain to her. And basically she rings the bell and then she says, oh, I forgot my key or I lost my key and Teresa just bids her enter. Another question for Maman Laval, I would guess for tomorrow. Well, one thing is for sure. You really have the power of prayer down pat. <sighs> but why? I did not even want her help. Would have been you nice. are special, obviously. I mean, I've been praying all my life. I've never gotten any response even vaguely like this. Well, you're special as well. If not, she wouldn't have saved you. And if not, you would not be hanging out with me, but been gone long time ago to not face the madness we've been through. 
because you see the same things that I see. It's not an only me thing. Let's go home. Yes. Let's do go. that. You go home. Yeah. She whips up dinner in no time. It's great. Mm -hmm. The question she is... She has started. She has, she's picked up eating again. That's good. And then, of course, next morning, you know that Teresa will come back. During the evening, Alice would mm -hmm. see if Maeve stays away from her or if Maeve is returning. I think she, she would actively try to approach Maeve and see what happens. Maeve... It doesn't hiss at you anymore, but she, okay. she walks away from you. So more skeptical mm -hmm. feeling or in a scared feeling way, if you can even see with a cat. Yes, you could. Um, it's skeptical. She's not okay. afraid of you, but she feel, but something was, like, it was weird. Yeah. And she, honestly, she remembers mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Maeve. I did not want to scare you. I'm back to myself. And then she will just leave Maeve be. Mm -hmm. You go to sleep at some point. Yeah. Um, the morning runs ar comes around. You make breakfast at nine o'clock on the dot. Um, Teresa returns from her day off, her weekend off. Mm -hmm. And then basically um, Dotty says, okay, so when, when should we make the trip to the Bronx? After breakfast. Okay. So the two of you get in the car, get a cab, you drive to the Bronx, you come to Maman Laveau's house, make a psychology roll. What is, I'm scared of these dice, that is a critical success. You can tell that Dottie is very, very, um, nervous about going in there i'll just pat her hand it's 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 fine she's not angry at you you don't have to worry and her niece hates us anyhow so nothing to lose there i just feel so embarrassed because i let you down and i don't know how to ever make this up and she knows you already made up we talked about it it's past and done it happened Honestly, I'm making so many mistakes myself. It's just a give and take. I I don't care about that anymore. We've talked about it. Let's go. And the two of you go to the door that looks like it's somebody's flat. You knock. Yes. After a while, you see Maxine's face look through the window. And I give her a little smile away. Yeah, she, yes, uh, she, she probably breathes in deeply, although you don't know through the closed door. She opens the door, she steps to the side, she lets the two of you in, she closes Good. the door behind you. Good day, Maxine. Thank you for letting us in. I hope it's not too early. No, she is old. She doesn't need that much sleep. Busy day yesterday. Oh, yes for business oh yes and she walks ahead of you and she takes you to the little settee group thing and she asks you to sit down she says I, I will get her for you thank you kindly and after about five minutes madame Ma maman Lavo comes in this time without maxine mm -hmm. and she says oh this time the two of you are here well, my better half has to be with me. Sit down, children. I will take a seat. She sits down as well. So, thank you for the help. It was a kind of oppressive memory and I would not have survived it if I would have really felt what they went through. Do you want to tell us about it? Sure. Alice will describe in detail what she saw quite openly. The old lady just 
looks at you and she nods and she remains silent throughout. Mm -hmm. Well, that probably explains it. They were scared to death and rightly so because their bodies did die. They did. The question that I or we are rather asking ourselves, is it a proper body switch so the kids were pulled into the poor dying bodies? I'm afraid it's highly likely, yes, because that's how this works. Poor children. Yes, they were because killed. Even if the parents were evil or all the world around, they were just children. I'm not even sure if this was intentional. <clears throat> he said everything happened. will be okay. It sounded like he had a plan. Maybe she didn't. He had. It felt like it. He was calm. Yeah. And he was not surprised. When I say maybe it wasn't intentional, maybe they didn't intend for this to happen in the first place. Or maybe they didn't intend to have it then. Because the question is, did they still have to prepare with liver sacrifices and so on? Maybe they planned it in a later stage with someone else. Perhaps and they got caught. And the men were drunk enough and angry enough to... Well, would have been a white woman. They would have yelled witchcraft and burn her at stake. I think that felt kind of like the yes, in New same England. way just with voodoo and black magic people are scared of what they don't understand and part of them are getting quite aggressive against it especially yeah. when drunk you witnessed probably how it all began it sounds like it the question is why didn't i stay in louisiana they must have had money growing up. Well, we do, it could be that the children... We don't know how their bodies were. Maybe the children became sick. Yeah, Maybe true. something happened during the war. Maybe they had to leave the bodies again, and the only thing that they could get was, well, the only thing. Maybe... And then is the main question, what made them come to New York because they must have traveled on their own to New York probably well, in the bodies of the or maybe in the bodies of the orphanage keepers. the La Salles they came well from I have I have done some stuff. I have I have been talking to people about the La Salles it mm -hmm. turns out that they were actually free slaves like myself they did come from, from Louisiana, so it could be that even after emancipation they just switched bodies. You see, being white has its advantages, but it takes us away from our own heritage. Yeah, that was my estimate. It can keep you safe for a while, or feeling safe maybe, but... Well, it's a different world. It is a very different world. And yeah. it's maybe not the world that they wanted. Especially, I can imagine, after what I heard in Louisiana, it was not easy. Just like me walking in here, that would be impossible or would have been impossible in the past down there. Even in New York, it would have been impossible. It's still looked at, which I still don't understand why. But well, society is a horrible place. Yeah, society is a reflection of everyone who makes up society. Well, a lot of them should get a proper training on how to treat people right. She just smiles. Well, I have also tried to find out who's on the list of my non-patrons, who uh, basically is a little bit like your description. And a couple in their late 50s, early 60s, who don't come here. And interestingly enough, there is only the one. 
We have a couple of single people who don't come here. But I highly couples? doubt there will be in a couple. Only the one. Jacob and Ruth Morrison. They keep to themselves. Do they run yeah. a store or something like that? Um, he does odd jobs. He used to work in construction. Mm -hmm. She is a homemaker. Okay. And she does seamstressing. It's worth at least having a look. And see if it's them. If it is them, you have to be careful. This is, this is, these people, if this is them, they are very powerful. At least one of them is. And by what you describe, it seems to be him. It seems to be him. The question is, would you be tired of this over time? Starting over again and again and again. Not being yourself, to be honest. That is an interesting question, my child. Because at the end of the day... I believe, this is my belief, my personal opinion, we are not made to live forever. Honestly, I don't want to live forever. Maybe a few years longer here and there would be nice to have more time to read or travel or visit museums. But it could be that they are just doing this now out of habit because they are afraid. Because I can tell you one thing for nothing. Yeah. These two have put so much guilt on their souls that they will not enjoy the afterlife at all. So maybe they're now running from eternal damnation. True. But that doesn't mean that this is what they want to do. It could be... Or it could be that they're just clinging on to onto life because it's become a habit that they, you know, I'm not saying that they're happy in their existence. I mean, these two definitely are, they keep to themselves. They don't live within our community. They are on the fringes and I don't think that they're, that they're they don't have children either. Well, understandably so. If you had children, you would not do that. You would stay around. Because you would leave and you would never be able to see them again. Yeah, well, but you can die, so it's possible for parents to die. It's easy to fake your... It's easy to... They don't even have to fake their own deaths. Yeah, they would just die. You would leave your children behind and not having contact to them anymore. That sounds like... Well extra difficult to what they are going through anyhow well i mean the one thing that i'm that i that i'm also thinking is maybe they are just very damaged it sounds like it and i'm tempted to say we should try to maybe grab her on her own and see how she's doing she feels like the weaker link maybe it changed over years but in the beginning well, you are approaching this with not only your mind, but your heart. And maybe that is the way to break the cycle. I'm tempted to see if she's really in on this or just following him along. Till death do us part. Just doing that. Maybe. I can give you their address. That would be very lovely and helpful. I also have another question not connected to that. The safety measures you helped us set up in the house. The charms, the wards, yes. Do they keep her out of the house really? So we don't have to worry that she can get inside. 
because she hasn't oh. shown up inside. I heard her, but she didn't show up inside. But she's outside. We've seen her. Oh, you've seen her again? Mm. Has she spoken to you? No, she smiled and waved and copied my look because it seems to attract her. Well, what is it about you that keeps her coming back? I don't know. You would have to ask her that. Well, maybe I will. I can warn you, she's a bitch. Well, let me tell you, I've seen a lot worse. Well, I don't think I've seen a lot worse, but I've seen very terrible people. But, you know, it's, it, it would be so interesting to find out why you would attract one of the most interesting beings out there. Maybe because I'm not thankful for her help and I'm slightly annoyed by her. Maybe that's like, hey, that's a different thing. Usually Maybe people she wants behave to be your friend. Well, thank goodness. No, this is not happening. But again, the question, do we need to worry that she can show up in the house as me and we not even recognizing it? Or does oh. the ward keep her out? I doubt that she would be able to cross your threshold. Okay. Because we have servants who obviously have no idea what is happening. That would make for an interesting conversation, though. I'm here, but I can't get in. Will you ask the lady of the house to step outside and talk to me? I look like her. I know this is confusing. Oh God. Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. But it's good to know that she can't just step inside when I'm out and behave like me. But she does outside, which is enough to do. Well, maybe you're very much alike. That is an insult, but, well, I would not help someone on ask and someone else have to pay for it, even if they didn't were signing in on this shit, you know? Well, um, I still think that this is some form of, um, don't say it's a misunderstanding. I understand her quite clearly. No, I wasn't going to say misunderstanding, but I think it was just, um, maybe she really doesn't understand it. You know, she is, she, she's, it, she can live forever. That doesn't excuse bad behavior. I don't think she, she sees it as that, as that. I think that she really lives completely, a completely different life. You cannot try and understand her thinking because I think you're trying to put your logic into a mind that is probably unfathomable. It's like trying to understand the reasonings of God. Don't we say that God walks in mysterious ways? That is something you two would say. I am out for this topic. The thing is, it's just decent behavior. Someone yells at you that you are behaving horribly not even caring about this shows that you are not a good person. She's yeah. very self-centered. Everything is around her. Well, she is a goddess. Then why does she help people that don't even ask for it? Well, you did ask for it, said, says Dottie at this stage. I did ask your god, not her. Well, I asked the Holy Mary because she was... This god thing is above my head. We don't Dottie, need them. They are quite useless. <laughs> Dottie says, well, they can be quite useful. And um, they make maybe everything we should very go now. complicated. Maybe we should go now. And Maman Lago <laughs> says, yeah, I think that one needs some rest. No, that's not. But thank you, Maman Lago. And we will be careful. You should. And she gives you the well. address. Thank you kindly and have a hopefully relaxing rest of the day. After yesterday, I think you can take a break quite easily. Yes, I'm going to uh, put my feet up today. Thank you for taking the time for us.
Of course, always. And she basically, and Maxine out of nowhere appears and she leads you outside. Should we take a walk and see if we can grab a cab at, oh, you don't want to go there. What do you mean, where? Well, where our dear Louis is having his settlement. We will not go there. We will just see if we can grab another cab. You can grab another cab. Do you go home? Yes. Okay, you go home. Yes. Um, you arrive. It's already after lunch. Um, so um, Dottie suggests sandwiches. Do that. I will call the sergeant and see, or the inspector. Um, sergeant, yeah. Sergeant, is it right? Mm -hmm. Sergeant. See if he can find any information on the Morrisons. Mm -hmm. You ring him, you give him the information. He says, well, it's not a name that I recognize, but I will see what I can find. Thank you, and be careful around him. Well, I will not go there. I will just make inquiries. Good, but also... To see, if... do they have a criminal record and, and things like that? That would be helpful. Thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the day. Mm -hmm. You basically then are served soup and sandwiches, and then um, basically the rest of the day goes by. Sergeant Updike doesn't ring you. I think in the afternoon, Alice would want to go to hmm, somewhere where we could have a look at maybe old newspapers or information about the more richer families in Louisiana in the last year, 100 years. Like 100, 150 years. Yeah, um, well, you can go to, obviously, the library. They have back issues of, well, I suppose that, I'm not sure if they have back issues dating that far back of southern um, newspapers, but you can basically start making inquiries maybe yeah, around, that would be the goal. you know. Okay, so let's make a library use roll. Let's see. That is a big no. Yeah, for her as well. She find, you find nothing. You find you do find re registries, but they basically deal with stuff that happened after mm -hmm. the the war. Um, and I mean, there are plenty of Françoise there, but you know, it's like um, the records don't start until eighteen seventy. Yeah. Um, up here in the north and in New York, so you don't find anything. But you do spend a lovely afternoon in the library. You, you spend hours there and then you go home. And Dottie says, you know what? I don't feel like cooking. Can we just maybe order something and sure. pick it up? Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So you do that? Yeah. And Monday passes. Tuesday comes around. Tuesday morning. Dottie says it's two more days. Yes. Not long. Not long. Still want to go on your own? Where would you stay? What would you do? I would be in hospital. I can just pack some books. I can explore. I can go on your nerves in the hospital. A lot of options. <laughs> and everybody else would hate you for it. I don't care. I don't have to go back there. That is true. I don't know how long this is going to take. A few days well, off will not change much on what we learned. What if something happens here? We will show the new one how to t pick up a phone. I will stay at a hotel. They can leave messages there. That's not a problem. Yeah, can do come with me. Okay. The only Sergeant thing... Updike rings as well. Yeah, go ahead. The only and now thing... we have a lot of food for someone that is not there. <laughs> well, we will be fine. Yes. 
so we should feast on what we have, what we need to eat now, and the rest we can keep for later. And Dottie actually... One dinner, one lunch, one dinner, one lunch, and they're all feasts. Okay, so Alice would... Uh, well, ask now for details where it is, and she would book a room uh, in a hotel mm -hmm. nearby. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's in it's in New Jersey, and it's it's kind of like it's a nondescript place in New Jersey. With mm -hmm. you know, the main thing is it's got a station, it's got a hospital, and it will have and it's some a kind private of hotel, hospital, motel, yeah. whatever is around. Yeah, there. you you can find a hotel; it's not a problem. And then at some point, Sergeant Updike rings, mm -hmm. and um, he says, um, "Miss Baker." Yes, the Morrisons are upstanding citizens. They always pay their rent. They always pay their taxes. They have not been in. They haven't had a single brush up with the law. They are model citizens. Well, they're keeping to themselves, not being part of the community they're living in. But well, that is not a crime. No. But good to know that. At what I also fishy. want to say is there is nothing I can do about them. I can't even just show up on their doorstep. I know, you need a reason for that. But at least I yes. know that they are not known like he's running the underground mob or something like that. Oh no, far from it. I understand that he used to work as a builder. Yeah, we heard the same. Yeah. Now he's doing odd jobs. But at least now we know the official side. Thank you very much. Oh, also, just in case, from Thursday on for a few days, I will be off. So if you have anything coming up, just leave a message at my house. Our maid will take the note or call me at the hotel and leave a message there. And she will leave the hotel number for you. Uh, very... Uh, New Jersey? What are you doing in New Jersey? That's not exactly the place to go. Well, we, we are meeting up with someone. Not my chosen place, but that's fine. All life. right. Well, uh, nevertheless, enjoy. Thank you. And then, you know, Thursday ru ru runs around. She has already picked out a train. You get tickets. You take the train. No. No. Alice, before we would leave, on Wednesday, I'm quite sure, Alice would ask... Dottie, if she would want to take a ride to the Bronx again and s at least sneak around the house and place where Aristide and Vivian, no, not them, uh, the, the Jacob, Jacob and, and Ruth, Ruth are living. Okay, good. You take a ride to the Bronx mm -hmm. with the address. Do you let? Do you ask for for them for for him to let you out at the address, or close to it but not there? Close to it, not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, um, he, he drops you off there and then basically you, um, it's a block of flats again. It's completely outside the triangle. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the less desirable areas, very derelict place. Um, and there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, poverty there. That you can see. Um, there are kids that should be in school that are not in school at this time of day. And um, you also see one or two people who are drunk, basically just leaning against, sitting down, leaning against the wall with, you know, like how they have those bottles in those brown paper bag mm -hmm. thingies and just drinking from them. And as soon as you show up, basically begging for money. Um, I know better than giving them money. Mm -hmm. If there are children asking for money, she would be probably weak enough to drop a few pennies here and there for children. Mm -hmm. She would also make sure and also tell Dottie, make sure your stuff is with you because we will have a lot of pickpockets around. Mm -hmm. And then you arrive at the address. Yep. 
and you notice that the house has maybe th it's got three stories but so some of the windows have been um broken like somebody threw stones through them yeah so it's more like probably parts of this building are not even lived in and of course your drawing all looks at yourselves because you are white yeah I just, I don't think she even knows what she is waiting for. Some kind of like, yes, this is the right place feeling. But uh, she would just be standing there looking at the windows properly. Just trying to get a feeling that I guess will never happen. One set of windows is intact. And the curtains are drawn. It's broad daylight. Well, we are, we are in Jersey, Dottie. We need to figure out a reason why we talk to them. I can't just ring. I have no backstory, however. And I doubt that they've got a phone. No, I need ringing at the door. Oh! Sorry. She looks you. Oh, duh. <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah, I, I think waiting around for her to step outside is also not an option she looks at you know like there are people looking at you it's yeah. it's very strange let's go back oh there is one thing we could do we could see where the nearest shop is she has to go shopping sometimes that is true and um you walk around a little bit and yes there is a corner shop um and that seems to be where everyone congregates. You know, that's where people do their shopping. They have groceries and stuff. And um, she says, well, that's probably where she goes. So we should have an eye on this place, maybe. We are still sticking out like crazy. I saw a thumb. We'll figure something out. We will figure something out. And there's also the possibility of coming back at night. Well, I mean, the attack seems to happen at night. This thing that they that they were talking about. We're not sure, to be honest. It might be at night. It would be so important if we could ask one of them. Well, I honestly think that something must have happened to them something I mean or is it enough that you just are seen by this thing or does it have to touch you that is a good question something must have happened also honestly if I have the chance to live forever I would upgrade and not downgrade I get I know what you the mean. point about switching back to being closer to your roots although they're keeping far away from the neighborhood and being part of the community which is a big thing around here they are lonely people let's get what if, this, what if this all of this switching of bodies is affecting the mind she was talking about soul, but what if it's a lot different? What if it's them going slowly crazy? Well, I would be insane by now, just switching bodies, past stories and lives. It's not just another body, they're changing lives. They're stepping into an already existing life and they have to adapt to it because if they're behaving too weirdly, they will be in trouble. So they retain their memories and their ability to do this. Yes. But like you said, they suddenly are confronted with people who know them, but don't know them. Exactly. 
also missing gaps about the past if someone is joking like do you remember three years ago ha 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 and they don't remember because if they really kick out who's in there i would suspect the memories are gone as well what if we just think about this for a second what if they actually need help They have so many. It would be an easy to go to Mama Lavon and ask him for help. She would not judge, she would help. We have to pay her. They obviously don't have that much money, but she's known around here. They do remember what she said the first time we were there. That this thing, this 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 spear finger, was one of the most powerful entities you can possibly summon. Yes. What if they're not commanding her at all? What if she's in charge? I mean, they don't have a big chance. And say I, don't stop. I mean, I'm not sure what she would be getting out of it because essentially it sounded like you have to bind her and then command her to get those livers and that's what she does. And you use the liver for your, for your magic. But what if something went wrong along the way? The what if is... they've got something that she wants and she keeps them alive? It's also a question if she is using the livers and as thank you, she gives them the chance to switch. Maybe. Then she would not like to get it stopped because then she needs to find new people that is like feeding her or keeping her entertained as we learn from our deity. Or maybe keeping her here. Maybe she really likes being here. I think by now, Alice at least would have made sure that we are slowly getting back to the cab, getting yeah, inside. Yeah, you, you are already in the cab. Although yeah. this discussion we would keep quite low mm -hmm. because it's a very weird discussion. And I know cab drivers officially are not listening in. They are listening in. <laughs> of course they are. Well, we need to find a way to talk to at least one of them. Do you know what we should try and find out? When was the last time anyone saw them? Well... Maybe we could ask Louis to make some inquiries. Yeah, that is my idea as well. Um, cab driver, I think yes, it would be quite... Good. Turn around, um, we would need to go to the black cat, please, in the Bronx. He takes you back to the Chat Noir. I will give him an extra tip. Would you like me to wait, miss? Uh, yes, please. It will not take that long. And I will just look at Dottie. Do you want to wait here? It will be No, I'm going to come inside. Okay. And then we will step inside and have a look around if we see A, Louis, and B, a certain man we don't want to see for Dottie's... You, you do see James. Um, he he notices you coming in, mm -hmm. but he looks away immediately. And um, well, it's not like he's, it's not like this ignoring thing, but he's trying not to intrude on your personal space by looking at you guys. So he yeah. just basically turns away very, um, yeah, very graciously in a way. Alice is just a little bit shaking her head. And um, and focusing. Dottie looks at you and she says, "Can I have a moment? You you just try and find Louis." Sure. Dottie goes to the bar and stands next to James. Alice is looking around if she can see Louis, but every second glance is towards Dottie. <laughs> James. Well, Dottie's standing there, and James is uh, 
James is quite a bit taller than she is and he looks down at her and she is saying something to him. And he listens and then he nods and then he bows and he kisses her hand and she comes back to you. I hope by now I've at least spotted Louis if he's even there. Well, um, Louis, you haven't seen him yet. No. Okay. I will uh, graciously look around as if I just glanced over Dotty from time mm -hmm. to time, just circling. Or mm -hmm. probably I would have gone to the bar on the other part and yeah. just asking blankly if Louis is in or if he's <coughs> on a job. Oh, uh, Louis is on a job, but he should be back in about 10 minutes. Um, could, if I could interest you in some whiskey, madam. Uh, a whiskey for me and maybe a gin tonic for my Coming friend. right up. And maybe another whiskey for the young man there. And she will paint to James just as thank you for the last drink. Or whatever he of likes course, to drink. Madam. You know, probably course, better what I will he ask enjoys. What he, what he would like. Thank you. So he puts down a whiskey in front of you, he puts down a gin and tonic in front of Dotty, who has in the meantime arrived, mm -hmm. and um, then he speaks quickly to James, and then he nods and he pours a drink for James. Okay, uh, Louis is on a job, but he should be there in a few minutes. So I think we'll just wait. wait. Mm -hmm. She takes a gin and tonic. I will have a look at her, close look, inside, <laughs> see how does she look. Psychology role. Hmm. Nope, that's a 71. I have no idea. Inscrutable. She, she, she's alive and she hasn't <laughs> she cried alive, her eyes yes. out because that would be something I would see. No, she's not crying. Then she would just with a skeptical look at Dottie. You're okay, right? Yes, well, I am okay. As okay as... Nevertheless, ignore me. No, ignore I am okay. I said I'd read his letter, and I said that I thanked him for it, and that there were no regrets. Alice is biting on her tongue. So if Dotty knows Alice just halfway and is paying attention, she knows that Alice is just swallowing down. What Cotton. was that you were saying? I'd rather not, because he will kick me rightfully Please. so. Please say it anyway. No, you you don't want to hear my advice on men. Just just do your own thing. No, it would be insincere towards him if I did what he would like me to do. Well, I'm I'm very impressed that you stood up to him because honestly, I'm not sure I would have done that. I didn't have to stand up to him. I just told him what I just said to you. I would be good into hiding and just ignoring that he exists in your shoes. So, head up for that still. He seems to be like a good man. I'm not saying he isn't. I'm still not sure if there would have been... but. It's your way, your decision, your life, not mine. I'm... What is it that you're trying to do? Are you trying to get rid of me? What? No. Are you trying to marry me off? Or Are what you is insane? This? He would have to live with you still staying by my side, obviously. He, he can join us. We can buy the house next door. Just break through. What? What is it? I mean... Well, generally, I want you to be happy. And it's rare enough to find decent men out here. And he seemed to be one of them. So it's a bit sad to see this breaking. You sound like my mother. I and am. when somebody says, I just want you to be happy, I'm not sure if it's them who want to be happy themselves or if it's really me that they want to be happy. To be egoistically, I want us both to be happy. Because I want my friends to be happy, but myself as well. But and it would make you happy if I married James, is that what you're saying? No. As I said, it's your decision. You made a decision, this is not the right way. I'm not sure I would be clever enough for that, but 
your decision to do this route and I'm shutting my mouth on this topic. I just felt it was important for him to know. It was. At least now he's not questioning himself about what he did wrong, I guess. He, I made it perfectly clear to him that he didn't do anything wrong. If anything, I misled him. Alice again biting her tongue. We'll just drink and wait for Louis to be there. She's just holding on to her drink. It's pretty. <laughs> um, Louis does appear at some point and the bartender motions towards you. He comes to you. He kisses your hand with his very elegant, um, in his very elegant manner. And um, he says, I see a cab outside. I suppose it's waiting for you. So I take it that you are not asking me to drive you. Unless, of course, the two of you want to split up. Uh, no, no, no. You, you see it uh, exactly right, but you would maybe have a request for a job. Oh, let's hear it. Uh, Alice will look around. Is there a table? Free? Yes, there are plenty of yeah. tables and it's not really full. Then she would grab a table that is a bit to the side, just motion for everyone to follow. C Coke for you? Um, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay. But um, I will just uh, wait for me for a second. He goes to the barn. He comes back with peanuts. Also a good choice. We would... Well, we are on a case and we would need to ask around a bit in this community and we know that we will not get any answers. He nods and he smiles. We are not quite fitting in, even if no. my brain wants to imagine we are the same. I see daily that it's not the case. Maybe in the next hundred years, mankind will be able to overcome this weirdness about, hey, they are dark, they are white, they are red, they are green, whatever's out there. Um, it, it's not a horrible thing to do, but we would be curious if you would be able to maybe have a stop by and put in the name of the corner store and just ask if anyone has seen the Morrison family in the last days and how they were looking if they were looking fine or stressed out or just the usual that would be all well um, this is not my neck of the woods but it can be done I will I will ensure that you get the information. I will not get it myself because even I'm not part of that community. That would be helpful. Just tell us what to send where or to you and you hand it over. Also tell them they, they don't need to get closer to the Morrison family themselves. I will need some money for this, but it will not be very expensive. And he looks at you, but I will let you know afterwards. Okay. That would be lovely. Just as warning as well. You have a few days for that because we will be out of town probably for a week from tomorrow on. All right. I will swing. That should give me plenty of time to make it happen like really secretly. Either give us a call or I will just swing by when we are back in town. Please because do. I'm sure we will have a few more visits to the Bronx and maybe also to Mamola Bon. And honestly, you are definitely my favorite driver around town. Thank you. And do tell your friends. I will try to. And he smiles. I'll push over a few, probably like one or two dollars for your stack for betting. Just add it on top as bonus. Okay, so this, so this week my pool will be seven dollars. I hope it will double at least or triple. I will set these two aside for a special bet and if I make anything on it, we're going to share. Deal. She will <laughs> shake hands she, with him. He shakes your hand. And then the two of you leave outside yeah. as your cab waiting. You go back. Yeah. And, and then, then Thursday comes. 
you take the train you arrive it's um well the hospital itself is is rather small but it seems to be quite exclusive i mean yes it costs 100 dollars, which is very much money um and then dotty goes in she basically goes to reception they've got her in details and then she says um well I will send word. Well, let's see if I can stick around and how long it takes. If not, I will just check in and come back. Um, the the nurse is listening the two, two, mm -hmm. to the two of you and she says, it, well, Miss Williams will see the surgeon in an hour and then they will make a decision. Then, you know, she will know more, but she's penciled in for her procedure tomorrow after lunch. So I could visit her later today without any problems? Of course you could visit her. Then I would say, Dotty, you do your speak to the doc. If you don't need me there, I'm also willing to stay if it helps. Well, just come back. Okay. Let's say in three hours. Yeah, then I will just check in and I will be back mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will do the so. The hotel is a nice one. It's small. Mm -hmm. It's more like it's 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 almost like a pension. Not a real hotel, so yeah. it's, you know. Um the lady who runs it um is um in her 60s and um it's it used to be a normal home, but she converted like four um rooms upstairs into into really nice single rooms mm -hmm. obviously ladies only fine with that and um yeah and there's kind of like um two shared bathrooms you know it's 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 a simple place but you can get lunch dinner and breakfast if you so choose i will probably go for a very light breakfast just coffee and a bit of toast mm -hmm. and um lunch we can skip but i will do then dinner because late in the evening you usually are not allowed to hang out in hospital anyhow very well um yes good and you are staying how long because you were unsure when you made the booking i'm still unsure i will definitely book the room until monday it might be that i have to prolong to tuesday if it's not too much of a hat honestly just go to tuesday if i leave earlier it's like this well we we can we can discuss if you if you leave, if you do leave early then we can always talk about the price okay. as well all right then um well um i uh, here's your key thank you and this key and she gives you she basically it's it's, it's a key ring with two keys so mm -hmm. this one is for the front door and this one is for your room um and um please um no visitors um after 10 o'clock and no men at any time and she smiles at you. She would hesitantly ask, it might be that for the last night, uh, my friend female is coming over because we will leave Jersey the next day. So we will uh, see if you have maybe another room or maybe a guest bed we can just add to the room for a night. That should not be a problem. What's her name? I will pencil her in. Dorothy Williams. Very well. Yes, of course. Thank yeah. you kindly. So she's she's also on holiday? Yeah, visiting. Visiting, yes. And All uh, right. we will see when we get back together to go back to New York. Good, good. And then basically, um, you go back to the hotel, yeah. uh, to the hospital, hospital after about three hours, um, and the nurse shows you in. Um, it's this almost looks like a little bit of a hotel room. So it's got a bed, it's got a table, it's got like uh, and a chair or two chairs, you know, like easy chairs. Um, and she's sitting there, and she's looking out the window. And as you step inside, she says, "I'm so glad you're here. I think I would have gone crazy if I was on my own." There is nothing to do. I brought books. I can't read. Well, we can make plans. We could also go for a walk. 
Sure. But, and make plans while we're walking. Sure. If you are allowed to leave, to stay which I here. think, then let's go. Well, they said that it's kind of okay. I'm not allowed to leave after surgery. That for is a day. reason, but for now, let's take a walk. So you take a walk. Yeah. The place is small. It's nice. It's by the sea. You can actually go to the seaside if you like. No. No. <laughs> Us being together at the seaside is not no, causing that's, the that's nicest true. That's memories. That's not a good idea. She um, will look for anything that is like green fields or, or whatever that is not. Yeah, there is there is a park. <laughs> that would be her way. It's a small park, so you can walk that's around fine. it a couple of times. It's not. Yeah. Maybe there's a bench we can just sit down. Yes, for there a is bit. a bench. Yes, it's it's um yeah. So you sit down, and she says so. When all of this is over, yes. When all of it is over, I think we really should try and get a holiday. I think so, and I'm quite tempted to maybe follow Pamela's uh, Matthew's idea to go to Egypt. Oh, you are quite interested in it as well. For me, it's well, a, it's I would a love to. I would love country. to. I would love to. And we have someone who can keep the house and look after Maeve. And look after Maeve. Because honestly, I'm quite sure, even if we say it's still a bit of a test ride, Teresa is a good choice for the job. I think she is. I think she is. And I think she will come round. Well, she already warmed up to me a little bit. She was worried about you not eating properly. Oh my god, she's turning into me. <laughs> it was very sweet. She was really unsure if she was allowed to say something, but she was worried. I just told her you had a big thing coming up and that you were just simply nervous and it will pass by. Well, yeah, it will. You know, it's this weird feeling that you've been kind of like trying to get to a certain time and now I can look at my watch and I can say, this time tomorrow, everything will be different. Yes. To be very phil philosophical every day brings a new change and a new way forward yeah but i think some t in most on most days it's not as clear this and is a not as big yeah and it's also not, i mean sometimes you can look back on a day and say oh today brought a great change a lot changed today yes but only very rarely can we look into the future and say this is going to be a situation that's going to change my life and this will change my life for the better dear for the better for the better yes i'm not doubting that it, it's but don't don't get me wrong i don't want this but i know it's the right thing <sighs> the thing is there's no good way whichever way is not the bells are ringing everything is perfect way but it's a good way for me it's the right way for you, so. You know what I've been wondering? What? What will the mother of shadows say when we do this, when I do this? Because she will know. I wonder, okay. is she watching? I wonder, is she thinking about this? I hope she doesn't care. And if not, the wordings would be not very nice from my point of view. You it's, think she wants me to have the child? It's none of her business. It's worse enough that she even stuck her nose into this business. Maybe she just enjoys the suffering you're going through. Maybe this is why she's following you. Because she Ask. wants to me suffer? No, because I think she wants to know what's happening. Maybe she doesn't know everything. 
then it's not the... Well, she's generally approaching things in a really wrong way. She would need instructions from a normal being telling her that she's doing it completely wrong. I also, how, how do I know that I'm talking to you? Um, that is a good question. Um, we need to... She, she, she smiles at you and she says, even the fact that you're asking this back shows me that it's you but you see for all i know you came to the station with me and you walked into that hotel but for all i know as well you might be her well secret wording mirror and seaside mm -hmm. she doesn't know that if you just yell out secret word and she just blankly stares at your face and be like what you know to kick her and leave. To kick her and leave, or just run. Well, honestly, don't give her the 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 the, the happiness that you run from her. Just turn around and leave. Peace and quiet. Well, yeah, God knows what she can do. So it doesn't seem that she wants to hunt and kill us. No, so, we we've seen much eviler things. If a Wendy oh, goes yes. behind you, you run. No, I, I try to kick it, but you should run. Or duck and yes. hide is probably the better way. You tried to kick it. You were gung-ho about all of this. Well, you nearly got killed. May I remind you? And she basically takes her finger and pokes you in the ribs. Ouch. No, not anymore, but may I remind you? That is the problem when, for me, my head is not working and I'm just jumping on a gut feeling. That is the functioning mode. Sometimes you should stop functioning and listen to your heart and not just to what's between your ears. Well, functioning mode is what I learned and that is what is just kickstarting in when things get weird. Stop. I mean, sometimes I wonder why you are so cerebral all the time. Have you met my mother? Yes. To survive that, that was the only way to go? Feeling and heart is not part of that family, except I have me time with my dad from time to time. Usually it's just... Alice Baker, you have to function. Behave and do as you are told. You have to play your part. Don't be Maybe. yourself. It's not a good way to be yourself. Maybe you should start. start you that. should start letting go of this. At least sometimes. I have been trained like that for years. I attempted to say it will stay like that because it more or less often of saved my life as well. And there is that person looking at me, telling me this, who said that I could change, that I should change, that there was so much more to me. That is easier to say to others than doing it to yourself. I'm not, I can't do it for you, but I'm just telling you. I understand what you mean, but I am. What are you afraid of? I'm not really trusting in my heart and my gut because it rarely is useful. There's no logic behind it. Not everything is logical. Well, sometimes it's just blankly fun, but, um, well. For the heart, I have you by my side. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting here because your brain told you. Well, no. There you are. Although the brain did not find reasons for not to be here. So we've, we've, we have to find a way to shut up your brain every so often. I tried drinking. It works kind of with side no. effects that are not 
really no, good. That's not what I meant. I will make you a deal. All right. I will try and curb my emotions, which are also new for me. And you will try and every so often just sometimes let go. <coughs> Alice will just hold out her hand like the usual and deal. And he grabs it. You have a deal. We have a deal. And now I really need some food because to tell you the truth, they offered me biscuits and the tea. You could read your paper through that tea. That's how thin it was. And those biscuits, they were from a tin. Let's see, there, there, there must be yeah, some kind of are. restaurants, even if it's not good, but a diner or something that yeah. is definitely there. So probably there is a go... really nice cafe by the seaside. And then there's a diner that's not by the seaside. I think Alice would go for the diner because she mm -hmm. thinks Dottie can use something hearty. Yeah. Before you... she goes there and gets the food that usually is served in a hospital. Yeah, so she goes there, you go there, you have a really hearty meal. Then at some point, you know, you spend some more time, but then yeah. she also has to go back. So she does go back and she says, I will see you tomorrow evening. When is your appointment? After lunch, one o'clock. I will peek in in the morning, anyhow. Okay. And then she goes inside. Yeah. You go inside. The landlady um, is not to be seen at all. So you go to your room. Yeah, we'll just wait <coughs> for the information that dinner is available. Mm -hmm. She has put in um, a bunch of flowers that wasn't there. So basically there's a vase with freshly cut flowers as it looks. And then at um, half past seven, there's a knock at the door. Ms. Baker? Yes. And you're my only guest. So um, you can come down for dinner now if you like, or I can put it by and you can have it cold later. No, 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 I'm, I'm fine. Give me two minutes and I will be downstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically um, food is served and mm -hmm. you're on your own because she will not join you because that would be inappropriate. And it's it's a pot roast. It's nice. It's good food. It's hearty food. She is a good cook. And then the evening wears on. The next morning comes around. You have a light breakfast. Yeah. What you wanted, she has made you. Again, you're the only guest. She says, well, usually my guests come on a Monday. Um, not on a Thursday um, and with Easter just passed um, and um, so yes and I have I will be able to accommodate your friend um, so that won't be a problem I've put it I've penciled in her name and then you peek in in the morning yes and um, Dottie is like a little tiger in a cage she's basically pacing trying willing the clock to move I think something that Alice would have tried to get her hands on in the morning when the stores open to see if she could get some wool and some needles just to keep Dottie busy. So she would yes. show up with a little bag with some wool and some knitting needles just setting it in front of her. Yeah, that worked out. You get it. You give it to her. She is... I should have thought of this. I Why didn't... I brought books. Why didn't I bring my knitting? And she starts knitting because that's something that she can do whenever. Yeah, and even if you're weak, knitting is kind of working as long as your hands yeah. are halfway steady and it kind of yeah. calms usually most people. Yeah. Alice, it, it does. makes aggressive because she can't do it and she hates it. And within minutes, she throws the needles to the ground and stomps off. But Dottie seemed to relax when she's knitting, so... Yes, she is relaxed. And then at some point the, the, the nurse does come in. She says, um, we now need to prep you. Then I Williams. will leave. Mm -hmm. Probably Dottie will get a fat, uh, like, a kiss on the forehead. Mm -hmm. I will see you later. I'll see you later. And I will look at the nurse. Take good care of her, please. I will. Um, if you want to, you can come back in uh, three hours and speak to the surgeon. I will definitely do so, thank you. Mm -hmm. And if there are any issues, I would have also left the number at... Uh... She looks at it okay. and she says, thank you. I can assure you that there won't be any issues, but just in case, I will keep this number safe. Thank you kindly. And then Alice will leave. 
and mm -hmm. she will probably go to the seaside now. Okay, you go to the seaside. She will just try to find a place and just sit there and stare mm -hmm. outside. Probably the cafe might be a good stop mm -hmm. to go there, grab a strong mm -hmm. coffee and just stare. I rolled a 95 on your luck. I didn't expect you to make your luck roll, but I didn't expect you to do so badly either. So the weather is actually just improving and a storm is coming, but yeah, she doesn't care. That is actually quite an interesting sight because you can see that there is um, basically um, there are there is lightning going mm -hmm. going off over the sea, which I think is always quite magical in a way. It's I know it's dangerous if you're at sea, but if you're not, then it's actually something nice to look at. Um, and then it's time to return to the hospital. I think she would have stayed in the cafe for like an mm -hmm. hour and then okay. she would return to the hotel. Just be yeah. up mm -hmm. in a room, mm -hmm. probably pacing up and down, up and down, yeah. up and down, up and down okay. until okay. it's time to get to the hotel. You go to the hospital? Yeah. Uh -huh. You talk to the nurse. The nurse says, yes, of course. Um, the doctor is ready to see you. You, she shows you to the surgery uh, to to the room. It says, mm -hmm. um, um, Doctor Carter, okay. MD. She knocks on the door, and you hear a voice saying, "Come." And you walk inside, and Doctor Carter turns out to be a woman in her late fifties, mm -hmm. in very uh, thick curly hair, grey hair, and she says, ah, um, Miss Baker. Um, yes, good day. She, she, she shakes your hand and she says, uh, please do sit down. Um, you are here with um, Miss, Miss Williams. Um, yes. Uh, she, Miss Williams is fine. She's currently waking up um, and you will be able to sit with her if you like um, and yes, to please. be there when she is, she is awake. Um, everything went well. Thank you. Um, I will speak to Ms. Williams. I have already spoken to her. Um, she knows what is going to happen now, um, but I will let you know as well, because I understand that the two of you share a house. Yes. Um, the procedure was, I don't want to call it successful because I don't think that they ever truly are. I can just say that it has finished. And no mistakes were made and Yes. Yeah. You see, the issue is, however, that this has um, a very profound um, cons well effect on the body. Um, to end a pregnancy in whichever way um, has effects both physically and psychologically. So um, she will probably feel very exhausted mm -hmm. and there is nothing that we can really do about this. This is something where the hormones will need to get back into balance. Okay. We can give her pills for that, but it's really up to her if she wants to take them. I I can offer them, but I have no advice either way if they are helpful. I know that they work, but it, it's really up to the up to the person themselves. Um, it is also important uh, that um, for the next, I want to say week or so, she doesn't really carry anything really heavy. That is hard to get in her head, I'm quite sure, but we will take care that she's not caring. Good. Yes. Other than that, um, I think I would like to, I usually ask my patients to stay with me for another two nights, just in case there is anything. That is no No problem. infection, no fever, nothing. Does she um, need to stay here or would it be enough if we stay? of kind of next door oh um if if you like um if it uh, however i would like to see her again tomorrow well i would say well she, she in the end has to decide but the question is as i said does she need to stay no here? i mean that that is totally fine but it would be good if i could see her again that tomorrow so problem, unless because we are staying of course. and she will name the hotel oh good good yes it's not um, far away so no i've stayed there myself on occasion um well then, um, how about I just show you in with the patient? It, it will probably take another half an hour or so for her to wake up, but you know, at least then she sees a friendly face. 
to be evil enough to say we are kind of used to that by now, so let's do that. She 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 looks at you puzzled and she takes you to the to the to the waking up room as it were. And it's it's an interesting room because it is very bright. There is a view on the garden because apparently it's the back of the house. Mm. And um you can see um and they've they've put in some flowers. Um so there are so there are vases with flowers and um, Dottie's lying there. She's still asleep. And after a while, she does wake up. You are alone with her. The nurse says, if there is anything, I'm right outside. If you, you feel that this is not going well, just let me know. If, you, yes. if I don't hear from you in 40 minutes, I'll be back to see. Thank you. But if she does wake up, I would like you to tell me. I will so. Thank you very much. So Dottie comes round. The first thing she sees is you. Um, and she asks a question that um, is quite common in these circumstances. She says, is it all over? Well, the doctor did what they can do. So now it's just giving your body time to because heal. Because the last thing I remember is counting back from 30. Then at least it worked at the the procedure went fine. No, nothing went wrong. The, they, they are quite happy so far. She looks around and she says, and she looks and she sees the the, the the clock and she says, so time has passed. It feels like no time has passed at all. Well, I can tell you it passed. Good. But I'm glad to have you back. I just woke up from, from, from a deep sleep and I'm still tired. Or tired again. Oh, you'll be tired for quite a few more days, as it seems. At least the doctor said he told you as well. She... That afterwards. Well, your body still have to proceed all of this. When can we go back? Well, the doctor said he would like to have you around for two days, but we can go to the hotel and just stay nearby. So you can even go over with me to the hotel this evening. You just have to come by tomorrow for a checkup and I guess the day after for a checkup as well, because we all don't want that something goes wrong. They should check up if everything is fine. Uh, she is... Almost, I mean, she she tries to get up. She's like, yes, then no, let's no, go. No, no, stay, 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 stay. You just woke up. Give yourself a few minutes, dear. It's not that they just laid a hand on you. you. They did an operation procedure. However, I'm not sure on the details. I'm not sure I want to know. It will take a few minutes. I know patience is not my strong suit, but you usually can be patient if you want to. Take a deep breath. Relax. She takes a deep breath and then she basically just sinks back and she 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 is she just lies there. So she's she's kind of like now going back into this semi conscious state. She is conscious yeah. but she's tired. And then the nurse I, I think by then Alice mm -hmm. would even stand up and peek outside and would just inform the nurse that she, she she's awake. Good. Um the doctor tells me that you want to go to the hotel. If, if, her? if it's not making any issues, we will obviously Well, I would like to take her blood pressure later. Let's say in a half an hour or so and see how she's doing. Sure. And then um, if, if you wait, you know, I know that this is probably quite boring for you, but if you could wait maybe another hour. It's not a problem. Also, I would maybe use the time for a few minutes to go over and inform uh, that, that Miss Williams is joining us already this evening. All right. Um, I will. I will now um, sit with the patient just in case, because sometimes afterwards they they become a little bit disoriented. Um, try to get up and stuff. Yeah, she which or... she should. It's fine if she if she wants to get up, but then somebody should be there so that she doesn't fall or something. Well, she tried already, but I told her to maybe take take it slow. It's not like she's just uh, had nothing happening. She just did not wake up and can jump out of bed. So give herself well, a moment. Well, they often to breathe. think they can. She just thinks she fell asleep. At least it feels for her like she just woke up. 
which yeah, is good. I know. It means you, you did honestly a good job. Um, well, I mean, um, I've also got the prescription. She will need some painkillers because at the moment she doesn't feel anything because of the operation, but there okay. will be pain. Um, if I can hand it to you and, you know, she has to take one in the morning and one at night. Sure. For three days. Yes. We will good. get it at the pharmacy. So she gives it to you and then you go to the hotel. She I... steps inside. Yeah, exactly. I will inform Dottie, obviously, what I'm doing, that she knows that I'm just not disappearing. And I will go to the hotel and see if I can find the owner. The, she's there. You book a room for, for Dottie? Yeah. That's fine. You get the room and then you go back. Yes. Dottie is then, um, she, she's then basically, she goes to her room, she puts on something um her clothes and then um the two of you leave they go you go to your hotel and you spend the rest there and the next day she goes back for the checkup and yep. then the next day for another one and then you're allowed and free to go and you go back to new york by train where you arrive on the one two on the monday yeah on monday it would be on yeah. monday you arrive there on monday I would have called home and give give yeah. Ther to Teresa a heads up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that we Teresa, are surprised. Teresa is has taken the heads up. Um, you can you can see she's 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 bought flowers. Mm -hmm. There are two vases full in the in the room in in the salon, and she has also um, she knows when you arrive, so it's probably late in the afternoon and she has basically asked you if she should prepare soup and sandwiches uh, yes please so there is soup there is sandwiches um and then she has also said she informs you that there will be a really nice dinner um it's uh, fish and um some really you know like very nice stuff that she's prepared and dotty is dotty is doing really she's doing well um and she really looks like well she doesn't look as careworn as she was mm -hmm. so it's now really one of the things that she has she had control over she could solve and she has solved so that's the feeling that you get from her yeah i think also during the time in jersey when we were at the hotel because alice wouldn't have done too many walks maybe in the end i think we would have gone maybe to the seaside here and there uh, but alice would have made plans with dotty about mm -hmm. egypt mm -hmm. basically already starting to plan a vacation just also to keep dotty busy Mm -hmm. And Alice herself busy probably as well. And it has worked. And um, yeah. And then uh, Teresa informs you that um, just this morning, essentially, um, there was a phone call from someone named Louis, no last name. Ooh. And she says, um, well, he has information for you, which he didn't want to pass on over the phone. And I didn't want to press him because I didn't know what this was in connection with. But he said that um, you could ring him. You had his number. Yes. And he would be happy to come by and give you the information in person. That would be a good idea. Thank you for taking the call. That of course, make... he was very, very pleasant to talk to. He is a good guy. Whatever you say, Miss. Oh God, she will be shocked when Louis get it. Oh well, that will be interesting. That will be interesting. So Alice would in the evening, whenever we are, she would mm -hmm. directly call him, but to mm -hmm. ask him if he would come swing by tomorrow, whenever okay. it fits for him. Well, he says that he could make um, it to you at three o'clock in the afternoon on the Tuesday. Perfect. And Are you a tea or a coffee drinker, Louis? <laughs> <laughs> he laughs and he says, um, a coffee will be fine. Thank Perfect. you. <laughs> and yeah, and then you have a plan. You're going to meet Louis the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we will leave it here. That sounds like a good plan. And so it's the Monday after the Monday after Easter and you're coming up to the new moon. Mm. 
and we all know we all know what happens at new moon mm -hmm. and then we will pick it up in two weeks time with the tuesday that sounds like and we will see what yeah. louis has to tell you i am very curious about it yeah me too 